Marco. Marco. Yes. I gotta get the bag. Do you like me? <laughs> Yeehaw! It's bull wrangling time. Yes, yes, yes. We are back, y'all. We're here for another installment of Losing Fortunes Radio. Let's go. <laughs> I gotta get the bag. So do you like me? <laughs> so we're here, and this is good because um, it has been a week, and I've been waiting with bated breath, as they say. Been waiting in anticipation for this episode of Losing Fortunes Radio, which is actually live right now as we speak. They are live doing their show, but we have a little bit to catch up on before we run into this. See, it says live right up here in the left. Um, stop the Amway tool scam. Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles on MLM news. Let's just stop in real quick and see where they're at. It's loading. It's fetching smooth playback. Here's to say, okay, I'll buy them. Um, now it's not enough to get customers to buy them because, um, you can't use the income claim on a customer because there's no incentive from a customer perspective. Super fucking boring. So good. Um, but we have some stuff to check out, to check in on actually first before we get to that, before we actually get to the Losing Fortunes Radio. First order of business is thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting. Click like on the stream. Enjoy that new Peter Mingles emoji in chat. I see y'all using it. It's way better. And I'm gonna add a Scott Johnson emoji too coming up here. What's up, everybody in the chat? Chemist, Andrew, Nightwing, Jimmy Moon, Panda Bear, Susie, BB, KB, Daniel, Sam here, Jared, Specs. What's up, every, uh, all the mods in this thing? Let's go. Legend Gaming. Wow, I had a... Actually, I can't say it was my idea, but I, I am in possession of an idea. I can't say I was the originator of it. But Little Marco, they call him. Yeah, they... I have an idea... So in my new video, which is getting, it's honestly, it's getting to that point. It's getting to that point where soon you will be able to watch it. I'm already gearing up for the rollout, I guess you could say, of the video. And um, it's nearing completion. This is probably the most, I've, most time I've ever put into a video, for sure it is actually, that I've been working on since January. And the idea that I have is, in the video, there's a, there's a couple different moments where you're going to see like diagrams of people's faces sort of in a pyramid formation. So basically when I'm explaining the structure of this company, you might see person one and then below them three people and then below them whatever, right? And initially the idea was to just use stock, not stock, stick figure people, like little b dots basically to represent people. But then the idea came around to make it more, to humanize the, the diagram more by using like stock images of actual humans. And then now the idea is to have goons send in high quality headshots either in front of a green screen or in front of a blank wall so I could easily, you know, in Canva, just mask out a headshot. And then we could use goons in the video as part of the pyramid formation, just to kind of connect, connect things, you know what I mean? And of course, we'd figure out a way to make bag out of this. I gotta get the bag. You know, so if you think that's a cool idea, then maybe when we're done this, with this giveaway Donald goal, I'm gonna put together some merchandise, maybe including this Losing Fortunes Radio tee from alwaysmarcomerch.com, which you can get, I mean, some merch orders came through some merch orders came through. I just put the link in the chat. Yesterday and today, some merch orders came through. We'd love to see that. We love them bags coming in. Scoop those up. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a donor goal after this for, you know, for a, I'll, I'll sell a limited number of them. So let's see if I make a diagram where there's one and then three and then nine and then 27. Uh, maybe I'll have like, maybe I'll have like 12 spots, 12 slots for like the first couple layers or whatever. So I'll say, okay, look, it's, it's, you know, some scarcity here. There's only limited spots. So if you want to be in the video, drop that bag and do this and do that and whatever. We'll figure it out. But I think it could be a cool idea. What up, Alex FPV? And Paz says, 
They call it losing fortunes, losing fortunes, they call it. And they lose, let me tell you, they lose bigly. We win strongly. We're winning very strongly, actually. Look at this guy. Look at this, you know. Also, you can follow along with the Building Fortunes Radio bingo. I just put uh, that link in the chat as well. Creatine Boy is back. What's up, Marco? Still selling drugs? In Scott's voice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's bull wrangling time indeed. Yes, yes. You guys can follow along with this Losing Fortunes Radio bingo. And look, we got Ming. Look, we got Ming right there in the t-shirt looking so handsome. We got uh, Scott right here looking, literally looking his best for sure. So, you know, good stuff. Susie said, I emailed them deba about debating you. Of course, they said, no, they wouldn't debate Marco and they don't beg for donos. <laughs> they invited me instead. <laughs> I love it. Diplomatic immunity says volume little low. I disagree. I disagree. Sometimes the sound, the sound effects or the video I'm reacting to be uh, too loud. You know, it's too loud. Uh, okay, let's see. The limit does not exist. Can Peter be part of the pyramid in my stead? Totally. Totally. I would be on top of the pyramid, yes. Bet Scott will mention Marco said he was handsome with his dead shark eyes. Scott Johnson gives me as a YouTube premium member vibes. Totally. Ming changed his Twitter picture after he took down his YouTube videos as well. No, by the way, yeah, you guys, we reacted to one of Peter Mingle's YouTube videos on the last uh, on the last BFR stream, or maybe this was even on Wednesday. So now, if you search Peter Mingle's on YouTube, obviously it's <laughs> you know the first results are my streams. But if you go here, this was his channel where he had a bunch of content. Now there's nothing. Boo, boo! Come on, Peter. What about the formula for motivation? What if I want to learn about that, Peter? Come on. You're a bad boy, Peter. Why are you such a coward? All right. All right. Let's see. Yeah, we got it all, Jared. We got Patreon. We got merch. Literally, I'm sucking at every different revenue stream that, that could be, that could exist as a YouTuber, except Cameo. I'm not on Cameo. When, when I, maybe when I hit 100,000 subs, I'll get on Cameo and I'll do... I'll say, hey, I'll do a video. Hey, John, somebody, somebody told me it's your birthday, and do I have a great opportunity for you? You just have to get three people who get three people. I don't know how, I mean, I feel like that would get tired pretty quickly, but you get me. So, what's up? It's bingo, innit? What up, Joseph? Peter is using the Goldberg method for sure. Uh, Y'all are using the fake goon method because there's 123 people watching and only 60 likes. What you were about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before judge. So let's figure that out and click like on the stream and thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting. So... I don't know how you can keep this going for, for years. I mean, it keeps evolving. You know, the lore keeps evolving. We find, the, we find pictures. We have bingo. We find new sources. They keep talking. So the first thing I want to go over regarding Losing Fortunes Radio is this. Uh, Glenn, our friend Glenn, has a channel on YouTube called MLM is Fraud. And recently, he's been uploading these clips from a conversation with Scott Johnson. And... Uh, Scott is trying his darndest to convince people that he's not at all bothered by me revealing his face. So let's listen to the first one. Here we go. Here with Scott Johnson. Me and Scott are going to talk about what happened yesterday on the Always Marco Show, where Marco revealed Scott's face. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Glenn. How are you doing? It's actually afternoon here and morning in Australia, right? Spot on. Um... So I'm doing well. So what, what did you make of yesterday's show? Well, as usual, I thought it was just a big nothing burger. Um, you know, Marco thinks that he's the first to do whatever. Um, the, the issue is I've been doxxed in the past at least twice. Uh, it could be more than twice because, you know, I don't pay that much attention. I don't, I'm not concerned about this kind of thing happening. So to me, it was just a big nothing. 
Uh, I know Marco thought it was great, but I think he's going to, what he's going to find out is this is just like the necklace that he bought. Uh, he, he bought a big gold. I, I react. I can actually reacted to this, to this one the other day here. Let's listen. Okay, so you may not agree with his tactics and you may think he's got a few things wrong, but you must admit, though, that he, his heart is in the right place. He does feel that he's, he's doing the right thing to, to make a difference, to really try and disrupt and expose these MLM companies who, quite frankly, are doing some evil things. Do you agree with that? Well, I don't think his heart is in the right place. I think it's the only thing that he was able to make any money at over the past two or three years. And everything else has been a complete failure. And so he went back to it. Um, now, I think the primary reason he stopped doing it is when he was sued by I Am Academy. Um, but everything else he tried was a total failure. And so in desperation, he's gone back to it. And so far, I haven't seen too many results from him coming back to it you know time will tell but for right now you know he's getting a couple of views for each of his live shows and uh he's hold he's holding back on his main video on uh the next mlm that he's been talking about because they threatened to sue him wow interesting interesting okay I don't know why, Glenn, you cut that clip so short. Here's another one, only 36 seconds. Marco is a nutcase. Scott Johnson fires up over face reveal. Okay, Scott, hey, Scott, so, so what, what did, did your family you make of uh, Marco's show on Sunday where he revealed your face and identity? What, did you, were your family upset by that? Not at all. It was it was what we call a nothing burger. It was meaningless. <laughs> it was um, it, it had no impact at all. Zero. Uh, everyone everyone that I know also agrees that Marco's a nutcase, and <laughs> it, it, it was given no attention at all. Okay, so they. Just... <laughs> I love it, Glenn. All right, there's another one here called. Marco, Scott Johnson says, always Marco has a small drug affected audience. This was 19 hours ago. This one's okay. uploaded. All right, let's check it. 60,000 subscribers. 60, okay. 8, so 8. He, he does have 60,000. That, that's a big audience. I mean, lots of people try to be YouTubers and get less than that. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a big, that's a big number of subscribers. His audience is like a couple thousand. Um, <laughs> On a, on a typical uh, show that he does three times a week, um, that that is not the sixty thousand. You know, most people that follow another YouTuber, they just follow him and then they stop looking at him completely. They they forget about him completely, um, and and he only gets a couple thousand views, and and a lot of them, like I say, and, and this is based on the comments on his shows. You know, when he brings up you know, drug addiction or anything. Thank you, Diesel Darlin, for being part of the cult for three months. We love that. You're wrong, you're fucking poor. Thank you, DT Peace Live. You know, do with drugs. There's a whole bunch of people piling in going, yeah, I'm hooked on this, I'm hooked on that. And then when he talks about mental health, oh yeah, I've been diagnosed. <laughs> okay, it ended. So there is still 43 minutes left, 42 minutes left in the current episode of Losing Fortunes Radio. I'm trying to see real quick if there was another Glenn video, rather another video on Glenn's channel that we haven't yet reacted to because he uploaded a couple of clips actually that were like 30 minutes long. So we could react to one of those uh, while we're doing this. I'm not sure if this one is part of it. Let me just look and see. This one's called Always Mark Over Scott Johnson Debate. I'm not sure if this is just a clip of us going back Welcome and forth to or what? Building Fortunes Radio, the better place. Oh, on to our I'm sorry. www of a Monday 9 p.m. evening, and I, I thought it was going to be. Oh, I think this is from Glenn's last appearance on BFR, which I didn't actually listen to. Come in back in. Yep, let's just see if we can get him. Come on, connection. Yep. Come on, connection. Come on, connection. Hey, guys. Hey, Glenn, get there. Okay, good. Yeah, don't move. You're on. Awesome. I'm not hey. sure what happened. Cut out. Hey, Glenn. Hey, hey Glenn, no problem. No problem. 
Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, we were just sort of stretching it out there, Peter and I. Every single subscriber doesn't watch every single video. News to me, Scott. Yeah, no shit. And we're, while you were trying to get back in. So the goal of tonight's show is to talk about um, some of the comments that I had about um, always stupid Marco, uh, the narco, Mook, his goons, the shyster, as we call him. <laughs> Each of those words has meaning. I won't go into the details now. Um, but anyway, um, I had a series of comments, and we're going to jump around a little bit um, because Glenn had a couple of special requests here from this list of comments, and I'm glad to skip around and, and uh, cover. Now, this, this first comment. Guys, thumbs up the stream. Be reasonable. There's 88 likes only and 141 people watching. I mean, just do that math, babies. Do that math. It ain't mathin'. You know, it's free to thumbs up the thing. Come on now. How will I eat if I can't go to the bank with those likes and tell the bank how many likes I got? They're not going to... Come on now. Came in during the eighth minute that uh, Narco was giving his presentation um, in Washington, D.C., this, this, this anti-MLM. Okay, this is where they're debating my conference speech, whether I made any sense or not. Conference. If you go to MLMconference.com, you can actually see his presentation and all the other presentations. And by the way, this is the third year they've done it, um, and um, they really have gotten nowhere as far as I'm concerned. They just keep talking and talking and just spinning their wheels. So anyway, during the eighth minute, um, you know, he talked about the 99% failure rate, and I just wanted to make sure that people understand that probably two thirds to three quarters of the true Sam here. Sam here says, you know, you made it when people make content from your content. People that quote unquote fail, they don't even last a year. Um, and, and the main reasons, by the way, sorry to keep interrupting. Beyond says, Scott, you are so much better and more level headed on your own. You don't need Peter. You're better than this. I'm disappointed in you and your friends have some pride, man. I mean, I don't know if he's better and more level-headed than Peter. I think they're both extremely stupid, always stupid. But, uh, yeah, I agree. Peter is using him. That I found in my own personal experience was either they were lazy or they were scared. You know, something frightened them. Um, for example, maybe they got um, rejected by their friend or something like that, and then they didn't like that feeling, so they quit. Or, you know, a lot of them, it, it, again, in my personal experience, they're, they were just lazy. They just decided, eh, I'm not going to do anything. And, and so I'm not challenging the 99% failure rate. I just want people to know that a very large majority of that 99% really didn't even try. You know, they didn't try very hard, at least. Uh, they, they almost quit before they started. Um, now, they were the lucky ones, actually. The ones that are lazy and, and scared, they don't lose nearly as much time and nearly as much money as those of us who did apply ourselves and got scammed by the tool scam and the overpriced Amway products. So they actually made out like bandits compared to the people who applied themselves and tried to follow, as they say, the system. So that's where I'm coming from. I just want people to know, because in, in one of the uh, sort of sources of this information was a class action lawsuit called Picorni versus Quickstar, and was called Quickstar back in the late 90s through the mid 2000s or so. Um, and uh, this this lawsuit, it's P O K O R N Y, Picorni. Um, this lawsuit. The settlement, what they did was they, they did a settlement, and the terms of that were that all of the people who bought a starter kit over several years' time period would get something like somewhere in the neighborhood of, of $100 worth of Amway products. Thank you, Even Stevens, for gifting a membership. Let's see who got it. Jared! Thank you to Jared and to even Stevens. So they weren't giving out cash. They were giving out Amway products. It's almost like rubbing salt into the wound, right? You, 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 uh, you're in Amway, and then they don't give you any cash. 
they give you Amway products. And by the way, the judge decided to value the products at full retail price. And so even though Amway probably spent, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 percent of the retail I'd, cost. I'd argue 5 percent. It could even be lower. Uh, manufacturing these products, um, they counted as if they were the full retail price, which was ridiculous. I sent a letter to Judge Conti, who was the judge presiding over it. Never heard anything back. Um, uh, but anyway, the the percentage of people that showed any kind of interest, because they, you know, they sent out emails, and I don't know if they sent out letters, but somehow they contacted a whole bunch of people to say, hey, this this uh, settlement is, you know, being finished up, and you are. I looked so fucking handsome at that conference, bro. Don't play yourself. Being uh, awarded this, you know, around a hundred dollars worth of products, um, that's really like you said, Glenn, ten or twenty bucks. <laughs> out of uh, Amway's wallet, um, but they got such a small number of people, such a tiny percentage that were even interested in getting even free Amway products that they doubled it. <laughs> they literally doubled the reward from like, uh, again, I'm not sure the exact amount, but it was like $100. They said, hey, let's make it 200 and, and see if more people will get interested. I like how Scott talks down on the 99% who lost, and yet he lost more than most people will ever lose or would ever lose. What up, Stephanie? I don't think too many more people were interested, but they stopped it after they doubled it one time. Um, but again, those are the people that just bought a starter kit and didn't do it, and yet you amazingly fall for this this idea that the reason why people are quitting is because they're lazy. I mean, you got to ask the question: other franchises, other businesses, they don't have these sort of failure rates. They don't have these sort of early dropouts. Why, why do you think that is? Well, one, of the, um, you know, a hundred miles away. This <laughs> radio show gives me headaches. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you. You're poor. You're fucking poor. So funny. Um, and that didn't go anywhere, and, and eventually they quit the whole thing, just like most people do. Quite expensive. They had the same sort of dropout rates. So your, your point is because it's really cheap, people get in and don't put in as much effort, and that's why cheap MLMs have a higher dropout rate. But the MLMs that are very expensive, there's, there's some MLMs that cost thousands of dollars to join. They had the same quick turnover rate, the same for over. You know, it's, now we're talking 1993. You know, those days those are days, over. <laughs> I saw it's got, sorry, it's got, those were the better days. Those were the days where they had dropouts. There was far, far, far less dropouts. The average person made far more money on average. When they were actually going door to door and actually direct selling, it was still bad, but it was far, far better. You said before that um, we're over. Yeah. Or turnover rate. So people come, people go. And it's a big number. It could be for different reasons. They don't make any money. They get disillusioned. They find better jobs. They don't. Uh, they don't like their manager. Could be a whole bunch of other things. And that's just the way it is. So that's just the way it is. So boring and wrong. Boring and wrong, frankly. So boring and so wrong. So true. Wow. They really suck, don't they? 154 viewers. Only 106 likes. But how will my how will the chemicals in my brain my brain won't release the good chemicals unless everyone validates me parasocially through the internet by liking my live stream? Don't you understand? Don't you understand the universe hangs in the balance right now? Don't you understand the importance of this? <sighs> Goodness gracious. You know. Th Trevor, first time catching a stream. Live after binging all your content this month. Thank you. Watching you live in downtown Orlando, right next to the Amway Stadium. Spooky. Spooky, spooky. All right, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Hashtag forgive Specs. Specs, I forgive you. Uh, Specs was deleting people's comments while his phone was in his pocket. Unforgivable, but also, you know. Enpass says, I have a theory that Scott is embarrassed by his loss in Amway. 
And when he sees anti-MLM YouTubers dunking on the industry without being in an MLM, he feels entitled to the attention. I couldn't agree with you more, Enpaz. I think that is so true. And thank you again, not Trevor Warren. Uh, Stephanie, yeah, you liked the last week's stream seeing, uh, seeing Scott's face reveal? That was crazy. This bit does not count towards the bingo card. Nope, 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 nope. Boring fortunes radio for real. I mean, it's honestly, swear to God, their show is only even bearable when they're talking about me. And even then, that is only bearable when I am reacting to it live and responding to it. No, Scott and Peter, and you know what I'm going to do? Next, you know what? You know what? Maybe I'll do. Unless they really give me something good to go off on this current episode that they're doing as we speak, unless it's really, really juicy. Next week, I think you know what I'm going to do? Next week, I'm just not going to give them any attention at all. Next week, I'm not going to do a Losing Fortunes radio stream. How about that? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. I think next week, next week, we'll just let it ride. See Goom what they do. Tax. Thank you. Thank you, Jaina. Appreciate that. You're wrong. You're fucking poor. Odds has been a member for two months. Yes, executive team leader. Marco, can you check my email to you from March 2022? Oh, gosh. Would love some advice. Shit. You, I mean, do you still have it? You might gotta, You might have to resend it. What, what was the name? Uh, let me see. I'm guessing Audrey, right? Audrey something. Odds. Okay, let me just look from that day. March 22. Let me scroll way back. You know I'm a rich, famous celebrity, so I have a lot of emails, of course. How do I go to the next page? I mean, shit. Apparently, my email only goes back. Oh, no, here. Here's the next page button. Here we go. March 22. Let's look. March 25, March 24, March, March 22. I have one with Robert Fitzpatrick. Uh, shit. I don't see one from March 22. Maybe I deleted it. Marco. Marco. Maybe I deleted it. So, might have to forward that on to me. But thank you, Odds, for being in the cult. Um, they would hate it so bad if I if I didn't respond to the to their next episode. Uh, Velvet, what up, Velvet? Okay. They're gonna be pissed. If you don't react to them, but good. Is it in the spam folder? I don't know. Don't know. Thank you. 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 Thank you for the bag drop. Uh, Lucy and Voldemort is saying they said hi specs. So hi specs. They want to say hi to specs. And that's good. All right. So hold on. I think I have another thing that I got to pull up here and show y'all. It's MLM related, of course. Also, this thumbnail. Thumbs up the ting for this thumbnail because, come on. I actually... So, Glenn has a video on his channel that I actually really want to watch because I don't think I've seen this one before. It's a... Uh, and I hope I don't get copyright claimed for this, but you know what? Past couple streams have been getting copyright claimed because we've been reacting to videos that have, like, music in them. Like, last night's, for example, when we were reacting to that goofball Robert... Uh, whatever the fuck his name was. Robert... Hollis, who was on stage at the Eric Worre event last night, if you were here, that stream got copyright claimed because he was he came out on stage list with music playing, and so the my stream picked up that music, and I didn't, you know, I'm not like in trouble or anything, but I can't monetize that stream. So all the people who go and watch the replay and watch ads, I get nothing. So that's why. But, but I mean, look, YouTube be like that. YouTube is a fickle mistress. So that's why we dropped them bags. I got to get the bag. That's why you guys hit the Streamlabs and do all the things and hit the merch and do all that, right? So uh, I appreciate that too because Lord knows this video that's coming up, all the members will get first access. All the patrons will get first access. It's going to be a big, 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 big modness. This video, it might be an hour long. And you know, I've been really debating this. My MLM videos have varied in length between 17 minutes and like around 30 minutes. And I always wonder if 
you know, what's the right length of time for a video and whatever. At this point in my career, I truly believe that <clears throat> the length doesn't matter. It's the girth. No, I mean, the length doesn't matter it is the quality of the content. CoffeeZilla just dropped his first video after four months of complete radio silence. No social media posting, uh, barely any Twitter, uh, at least that I saw, and no YouTube videos. I mean, this is, this is a guy who, <clears throat> in 2021, CoffeeZilla is going daily, daily drops. And now four months of complete silence, and he's dropped the first in a three-part video. I'll, I'll just take my personal opinion, and I'm sure CoffeeZilla knows the YouTube game better than I do for sure, and I trust his vision. But if CoffeeZilla took four months off or took four months to create a video, like I've been taking six months to create this video, but I've still been live streaming and whatever. If CoffeeZilla was going to take four months to create a video, I would absolutely not mind. I would I would love it, actually. I would love it, actually. If Scott, Scott Johnson, if CoffeeZilla waited four months to drop a video, and then one day I open up YouTube and I see there's an hour long CoffeeZilla investigation, I'd be like, oh, buddy, I would be so happy. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm gonna make some food and just fucking settle into this documentary right now. So I, I know I always struggle trying to reconcile whether people actually have more time than I think or less. Sometimes you know, the multi-level misery episodes, I was getting people dropping comments like, I don't have time to watch a 45 minute video. Motherfucker, first of all, who the fuck are you? You don't have time to watch a 45 minute video? Who are you? Who are you? You know, the president? Like you have such a busy schedule, you don't have time for a 45 minute video? Especially, you could put it on 1.5 speed, you finish it in 30 minutes. So you don't be watching TV shows then? So you don't want be watching movies then? You made it up. Everybody has time for what they want. But I get such a mixed reaction. I never know what, what people want. So, um, but yeah, anyways, I think it, it truly, I think it doesn't matter. I think as long as the content is good, that's the real issue. The multi-level misery episodes, I saw a steady drop off as the episodes went because while each episode is different and each, each person's story is different, I understand how over time it can become, uh, it can sort of feel like the same thing. But I was basing that series off of Caleb Hammer, who this guy has had such, such a meteoric rise in no time at all. Like this guy I discovered in like October and he had, I don't know, 20,000 subscribers. Now he's at basically half a million and he drops a full video, like between 45 minutes to an hour long video, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, okay? And he's just exploded. Now granted, the average viewership is, as you can see, you know, some get 500,000, some get 100,000. And very similar, thumbnails very similar, titles are very similar, you get me, but it's, I don't know, I think it's good content. People, every person has a unique story about how they fucked up their financial situation. So I was sort of basing it on that and I thought, wow, that'd be cool to do an MLM themed version of that, of Caleb Hammer's show. So, I mean, we'll see, maybe, maybe I could bring it back. Like when I'm, when I'm able to drop more consistently, I would still like to drop multi-level misery, um, you know, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Let's see. Beyond says, I listen to your videos. I don't watch them. Well, the streams you mean, right? Amanda prefers long. Okay, let me look at the chat. Let me see what y'all say. Supposedly you get paid on YouTube premium views even if demonetized. I think that's true. Okay, let's see. It's literally all promotions from Tim Hortons, the spam folder, yeah. Uh, famous celebrity. Okay. By the way, there, there's a misunderstanding about Jesse Lee Ward's situation. She's still in the same company. She's just now on the, like, the vice president of that company or whatever. It's the same shit. She's still in the MLM game. 
Um, I could clip the music from the stream, and I did, but the shittiest, this is so stupid that YouTube does this. YouTube, fix this. On YouTube, if you edit the video in any way after it's already gone published, like if you used YouTube's editor tools, even if it's something as simple as like muting a section of it because of copyright, even if you don't change the length of the video, YouTube will then disable the live chat on the video, which it's like, I don't know, I feel like the live chat is part of the experience, but you guys let me know. Do you guys also read the live chat when you watch the replays? Or should I just get that bag? So, prefer long form. Well, you know what? It's sort of biased. Obviously, everybody that's watching a live stream that has already been going for like an hour is going to say they prefer the, the long form content, obviously, but you see it. Legend says, length doesn't matter. It's how you use it. So true. People don't know what they want. So true. People enjoy your infiltrating videos more. So true. Um, fans are the worst piece of people to listen to. So true. Yeah. I honestly, I like, I like live streaming. It's fun. It's, I, I get to interact with the goons. We bring in the bags. But the next, the infiltrating a pyramid scheme series is definitely where the bag is at. And that is what's going to be, you know, I, I feel like the next Infiltrating a Pyramid Scheme video will be such a big spike for the channel. And we'll probably see the average viewership go from between 150 to 200 people per stream to maybe four to 500 people per stream. I, I mean, hopefully, I, I, you never know. You literally never know. I could do a three-parter and pass it. But you know what? I've always been against multi-part videos. Uh, I just feel like unless you're a huge YouTuber where you know your audience is going to come back for each part, it's just, you know, it, it, something about it bothers me. The fact that part one is always going to get the most views no matter what, it seems, is very bothersome to me. So uh, I would like to be able to encapsulate the whole story in one, in one setting. And if that means the video is 45 minutes, great. Who gives a fuck? Put it on 1.25 speed. Enjoy. You know? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Also, Caleb Hammer gives people sort of like an outline for what to do in their future. And there's that level of confrontation between him and his guests. Whereas with me, what would make it even more interesting is if I was like talking to people currently in MLM rather than uh, people who are already out because those people, they already know what's up, you know, what's up, straw babies, what's popping, super vice president. Yep. So true. Rome says, I don't watch you either, Marco. I put you on when I go on drives and in the gym, but I don't physically look at the screen unless it's a real video, but love listening to your lives like podcasts. Hey, I appreciate that too, Rome, but at least tell me you have seen my face before and that you think I'm handsome. Aww. Tell me that. I need the validation from a stranger on the internet I've never seen. All right. I got the right shirt on tonight. Yes, yeah, so true. Losing fortune, so true. So true. Like the longer videos. Okay, let's see. You don't read the live chat on the rewatch. Get that bag then. Get the bag then. Somebody literally commented today on last night's stream and was like, where's the chat? And I was like, fuck. You know. Yeah, the live chat for that original BFR beef video. Uh, I mean, I had to trim that video down. You're against multi anything. Yeah. Um, please, no three part videos. I agree. If, like I said, if coffee's ill, and no disrespect, but I mean, I, I can have an opinion even if he's my friend. CoffeeZilla dropped that first part and I was like excited and I thought it was a good video and all that. How at the same time, I thought that I wouldn't have minded. Like the first part was 15 minutes. So let's assume, if we assume that part two and three are also 15 minutes, if all of them were one part, it would have been 45 minutes. Let's just say. I would have loved the fucking 45 minute CoffeeZilla video. Who gives a fuck? So yeah, live chat is funner at the moment. That's so true. 
Yeah. And this new video, man, if it ends up being an hour or 50 minutes, I, I am going to aim for it to be less than an hour for sure. There's a saying as in, in the art world, you have to kill your babies. And that means like you might have stuff that you're really in love with, whether it's a song for an album or a part of a video. And it, you just like, that's the hardest thing is every time I do a pass of one of my edits, I realize, okay, you know what? Maybe this part isn't actually as important or maybe this part was, this point was sort of repeated or maybe this segment of it wasn't the most important or scandalous detail. So it is hard because I have to ki kill off pieces just so that only the best remains. Th there's this book I use every day called Productivity Planner and it does exactly what you'd think. And at the top of each page, uh, at least for the weekdays, there is a quote that's supposed to like motivate you and help you and whatever. So I, I, some, most of the time I forget to fucking read them. But this is the third copy of the book that I've bought. And so all of the, I've just cycled through these uh, quotes several times. And so I already know what they're, what, what they say. But one of them, my favorite one in here is that, let me tell, let me tell it to you. I actually came across it again recently. It says, I, I think I remember it off the top of my head, but I just wanted to read it in case I, I get it wrong. It basically says, perfection is not achieved when there is no more to add. Perfection is achieved when there is no more to take away. So I, I sort of look at my videos like that. Like there's a difference between a video being long and a video being bloated or dragging on. And that's what I'm really trying to remedy with this video. And hey, there's some clips, um, you know, as I'm editing this video, there's some clips that I'm moving over to the side so that I can be like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, this would be for a part two. If this video blows up, this, this footage that I cut from part one, this could be for a part two. My ACN video is a great example. I mean, all of the footage for ACN part one and two was captured while filming ACN part one. And in ACN part one, this is actually such a good example. In ACN part one, I focused <coughs> basically entirely on this guy, Nathan. Find a uh, yeah, this, this guy, find a mentor, this douchebag. I, I focused the entire video on Nathan, but there was a lot of footage that I had with Nathan's recruit named Justin. And Justin was the one who sort of like brought me in. So I was like, you know what? The video is super long. It's, it's about Nathan and Justin. And it started with like, my meeting with Justin and going to him and learning about the opportunity and then going to the meeting with Nathan. I cut all that just so that uh, I could edit it and make it so within the first minute of the video, uh, you know, we're already establishing me going to the penthouse. So within, within two minutes, I'm already in the penthouse and we're listening to Nathan's presentation. So. And then because I had all this extra footage, what I did was, and, and part two is one of my most viewed videos as well, 259,000 views. I went back and I showed the inception of, you know, how, how I got into whatever and Justin, and I used the footage from me and Justin's meetings and like alternate footage from the penthouse presentation of part one. And I went through me and Justin's presentation and talked more about the background of the company and how uh, the MLMs lobby the government and uh, how it affects immigrants and some of the backstory. And like, I managed to make a whole nother almost 20 minute video off of just leftover footage. I didn't film anything new. So that was a bag. And uh, to me, that justify, I mean, ACN is my most viewed video. So to me, it justified a part two. And WFG part one is my most viewed video and that justified a part two. Although for that one, I did actually film new shit, but you get me, you get me. So the new video, we're doing the same thing. Spec says I would have watched the whole thing. I was upset. Coffee made it so short. I mean, I wouldn't say I was upset. I'll still watch part two and three, but I'm like a, first of all, Coffeezilla is my friend and I'm also like a huge Coffeezilla fan. So of course I'm going to watch all three parts. But that just like, man, that part one video, that ain't going viral. That part one video just didn't give you enough to be able to like slurp on, you know what I mean? And that's, you know, that makes me sad. Let's see. Beyond gets it. 
put the live chat in the video itself. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You don't read the you don't reread the chat when you watch. Okay. I read the live chat when I watch the replay. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I just don't like having it on the screen because what if I want to cut clips from the stream to make into a video? I suppose the chat could still be there, but you see it. You see it. Okay. You listen to the to it like a podcast, listening to it while we walk the dogs. Okay. Watch videos in shifts. That's why I put the chapters too. Okay. That's data. Okay. I'm reading your comments now. Who you know who you know reads his loyal cult members' comments the way I do? Nobody. Nobody knows comments like me. What did Amanda say? Sometimes you be you y'all will be like agreeing with each other in the chat. Like Strawberry says, Strawberry says, agreed, Amanda. But now I gotta scroll back and see what the fuck did Amanda say. I don't even see Amanda's comment. So we made it up. Yay, made it up. Okay. The new video is going to be a madness, that's for sure. There does need to be some sort of satisfactory conclusion to each video along with a cliffhanger to bring people back. So true, so true. Hard to do, so true. You like those emojis, straw babies? Yep, good things. Yep. One hour, five minutes, three minutes, doesn't matter to me. I'd watch anything. Oh, thank you, Susie, I appreciate that. <laughs> wrong one, wrong button. Real goons, thumbs up the ting. Don't even let me look at the likes on this video and be disappointed. Okay, 30 of y'all haven't liked it. All good. All good. Nathan was cooking, though. Yeah. Okay. Amanda Del Rey messages are posting over and over again for me, IDK. Ah. Hey, hey YouTube's broken. Yay, it's broken. All right. I could do a multi-part series, but it would be... Oh, that's why somebody said I'm, I'm against multi-anything. Yeah. Uh... I would do a multi-part series, but like, dude, my videos on WFG, that's technically a four-part series. There's four videos in that series thus far, but I made each video as its own thing. You see it. So, anywho, chat keeps glitching on mobile. All right, well, I'm just going to quit live streaming because there's this much, you know, madness. Uh, I want to watch this video. Where is it? Dateline NBC. Exposes MLM. No, I want to watch this real quick. Robert Fitzpatrick. Interesting. Let's see. This on Glenn's channel. Sure that trust is well placed. Who made this? If you're entrepreneurial, we've helped 18,000. Not 1%. It's the top. Is Robert even in this? Don't be using Robert Fitzpatrick's name in the title. Beans and I don't even haven't. see my boy in the flim. Where's Robert? Y'all, Glenn, you're uploading some clickbait, Glenn. Let's see what Bill Keep said. But why is MLM still legal? Let's see. Play it. Bill Keep, I'm back to you. Right. So we do not have a federal law that defines a pyramid scheme. We have case law. In other words, from 1996 until now, the FTC has built a series of successful prosecutions based on case law, charging in firms of being pyramid schemes. Um, and when you do it this way, uh, you build this body of, of case law, but it takes time. Um, it will take anywhere between, say, two to seven years to prosecute a firm. Mm. And the reason that firms fight so hard is a pyramid scheme charge is existential. If we win, if the FTC wins, the company f goes away. And so the company fights with everything they can. The large MLM companies a contract with some of the largest international law firms in the, you know, it's not international, but the largest law firms in the world. And so they have some of the top Harvard-trained lawyers at their disposal wow. to fight the FTC. Let me read another comment. This is from John, and I'll put this to you, Josie, and to you, Hannah. Bars. Bill Keep ain't lying. Mojo Jules says, I'm late, so annoyed. Don't worry, Mojo Jules, we're here. Um, 
Embrace the madness. Mojo, late for class, Mojo. How could you? How could you, Mojo? Mojo, I'm gonna fine you for being late. The Streamlabs link in the chat. Ethan Vanderbilt, he was the biggest video anti-MLM figure on YouTube in 2018. Interesting. What happened to him? I never heard that name ever. This dude's only KB, making sloppy joes. Do you all top with cheese or no? What the fuck? Okay, he disappeared in the summer of 2020 after indicating to folks he would be retiring soon. He was dragged by several M big MLM bros. Interesting. Huh. Super sus. All right, well, it's about that time. There's six minutes to the end of BFR. Let's see where they're at. How do you get a membership? You can buy it, or it could be gifted to you randomly if you have your gifting, your gifts turned on. Um, if we can make sure we can get the connections right, and we'll catch everybody next time. Thanks, everyone. Oh! You've been listening to Building Fortunes Radio on buildingfortunesradio.com. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for the designated Building Fortunes Radio segment with Peter Mingle. Be sure to check out the buildingfortunesradio.com website. My baby is sleeping. Thank you, Johnny Azul. <laughs> Appreciate that. I know that's Johnny as well. My baby is sleeping. So true. So true. Come on, y'all. By the way, in case you weren't here yesterday, this giveaway dono goal is any single person who contributes money towards this dono goal, which caps once it's finished right here. Once we hit that $500 mark, it ends. I'm going to go look through all the people's names that donated and enter all their names into like a random generator. Doesn't matter how much you contributed. One dollar, ten dollars, doesn't matter. And uh, a random person's name is going to be drawn among those from those people who contributed to this dono goal. And I'm going to send you like a merch bundle with like, you know, uh, books like Ponzi Nomics if you don't have it, uh, combating cult mind control, freedom of mind, some books that are like in this in this space. Uh, merch of mine. I'll write you a little one too. And maybe I can, maybe one of my props, maybe I'll put one of my props in there. You know, I'd be having props. I got my judge gavel. I got my cowboy hat. I got my Trump stuff. Maybe I'll send you some Trump, whatever. So we'll see. 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 So that's what it is. Straw babies. Straw babies wants to know. They call her straw babies. Frankly, that's what they call her. All right. There's one other thing. The, the video has, the audio for their show has to process before I can like play it back and listen to it. So let me see one of these other videos on uh, our boy Glenn's channel. I want to see this real quick. Kirsten Dunst exposes MLM Amway Herbalife on Becoming a God in Central Florida. Okay, this is just the trailer. Faces. Is this whole show about someone who's in an MLM? Because if so, very interesting. People keep recommending that show to me. Nickelodeon iCarly joins anti-MLM. have the best attention span, so it can come off a little insensitive. Let's see. Notice that? Griffin, that badass guy I dated, who turned out to be obsessed with collecting pee-pee babies. Yeah, not so badass. Oh. Where is the anti-MLM? Okay, let's do this. This is important, so I put together a presentation that people from your generation will understand. If that's where on your own. Where is it, Glenn? Glenn, what are you uploading? It's okay. And I said, CJ, you can't stop my dreams. And then I stormed out as the crowd of customers cheered. Full of doom and peril. Like every decision I've ever made was a mistake. Right under a blanket? You read my mind. <laughs> Madness. Okay, I've always wanted to see this Dateline NBC exposing uh, Amway, Scamway. <laughs> They're true believers in a golden promise. This is the best opportunity that exists in the world, period. A dream of wealth they buy into with all their hearts. I will love you, God. I will love you, God. But a year-long Dateline investigation found a disturbing reality. Okay, what Kylie said that Robert was actually in that video that I skimmed through. Yeah, I missed it. We're destitute. Drop babies. Give me, yeah. Give me that Trump merch. Hell yeah. Thank you, Straw Babbies. You're wrong. You're fucking poor. 
Uh, uh, my husband used to roll his eyes when he saw me watching your streams. Damn you. Now he reminds me when it's time for Marco. Marco. Hashtag Marco saves marriages. Wow. That is some G shit. Thank you for saying that, uh, Chris. So do you guys watch watch it together? What's up? I do save really. I actually do. So many. I've saved so many. Nobody knows more about saving marriages than me, frankly. And I saved a marriage, and it was a great marriage. And we're going to save it very strongly. And really, if you look at what's going on with marriage under Biden, 50% of marriages, people aren't staying married anymore. People don't get married anymore. So true. With Trump, when, when I was in office, they stayed, they stayed together. So long, hundreds of years, they were married. Behind the dream, this was the dirty little secret of Quickstar. Absolutely. What will our hidden cameras reveal? That's what you said, not what I said. Did I say it? Chris Hansen with a dateline. Chris Hansen? What the fuck Chris Hansen doing in MLM? Hidden camera investigation. This may look like an old-fashioned revival meeting, packed with the faithful. But this crowd is worshipping the Almighty. My husband asks me if you're live-streaming tonight every night. Wow, that's amazing. Shout-out to your husband, Aaron. Shout-out to your husband, Chris. And shout-out to my husband, Drake. Dollar. Right. Tonight, the inside story of the business behind these elaborate events that attract hundreds of thousands of people every year. But the promise of easy money selling products like vitamins, cosmetics, and home appliances. Dateline's year-long investigation found a long trail of false promises and broken dreams. Here's Chris Hansen I never win a giveaway, but yet I still enter in them. It's your mindset. It's your mindset that's stopping you from winning, Alex. I know it. Seriously. I'm not a loser. You got to keep telling yourself that. And then you'll get the billions and billions. So true. So true. On hidden camera investigation. To catch a pyramid uh, scheme, Lamel. Hard time finding the place? Yeah, where are my Chris Hansen buttons? I have Chris. Here we go. You have a hard time finding the place? There's another one. I have another Chris Hansen button somewhere here. Where is it? Put your pussy Not that one. So live, I'll give you $1,000. That was the wrong one. Is it this? She belongs to the streets. Okay, never mind. I just have the... Do you have a hard time finding the place? I, I know I had a long drive one as well, but I don't know. Annoying. Out of the darkness of a crowded coliseum, a rally cry. Oh, Christopher Terry. Oh, Christopher Terry. <laughs> y'all don't, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Thousands of true believers gathered in celebration at arenas like this across the country, all convinced they found the true path to success, wealth beyond their wildest dreams. This is the best opportunity that exists in the world, period, period, period. It's not second, it's not third, it's number one. The promises are golden. You can have one. Is it one entry per person? Nope, it's just just random. Doesn't matter how much you donate it. Oh, you mean one entry every time? I mean, I'm just going to consolidate them all anyways. It's a, it's truly a level playing field. It's the best income op this donation goal right now is the greatest income opportunity in the world, honestly. Oh my. Make millions and millions and millions of dollars. Oh, billions and billions. Oh, Christopher Hobby. Period. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And he's like, period, period, period. He just slowly morphs into Megan Thee Stallion as it goes. This is the number one income opportunity in the world. Period. 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 <laughs> Fuck. Productivity planner merch with stream button quotes at the top of each page. I actually am going to come out with a custom notebook, and it's called Write This Down. And the front of the book says, Write This Down. And then every page will have, uh, you know, 
Maybe one of the quotes would be, put your pussy lips on live, I'll give you $1,000, or whatever that, you know, Boosie quote is that he says. Put your pussy lips on live, I'll give you $1,000. Has nothing to do with this content. I just love that sound. How many people do I have to recruit to increase my odds of winning? If you're, see, here's the problem with that, is you're asking how many, but this is an unlimited income opportunity. So how could there be a number associated with it? The answer is unlimited. When you ask how many, you show that you have limiting beliefs. Raise your hand if you got limiting beliefs. You show that you have limiting beliefs when you say stuff like that. Because what if I told you, all right, 100 people. Well, then you're going to go get 100, and then you're going to be sitting there. Mm -hmm. You might be making good money, Clairview kid. But then what? Then what? Well, then it's gonna, yeah, well, then you're going to be, what's the next? We got to break through those barriers. We got to break through those limiting beliefs. It's a mindset. So, you know. Keep, keep, uh, keep save, spending money, you know. It is a ground floor opportunity. That's why everybody's fired up. Fired up. But it must start with a dream. And dream they do of luxury homes, fancy cars, yachts, and private planes. So who are all these people? And what are they so worked up about? The people on stage are distributors for a company called Quickstar, which says it's had $3 billion in sales since 1999. They say the company's special formula for success has made them rich. But their main purpose here is to tell all these thousands of other distributors that they can do it too. All they have to do is sell everything from the company's own line of vitamins and cosmetics to name brand appliances and electronics. For that, they'll get a percentage of the sales. And if they recruit a ton of other people to do the same, they'll get a percentage of the orders placed by everyone they recruit. The more people they recruit, the richer they can get. And richer and richer and richer. You can do it. So why not go for it? Sound too good to be true? We thought it did. In fact, it sounded a lot like another company that made... Bro, this video is in like 120p. ...news several years back. Amway. A hugely successful business that came under government scrutiny was fined in order to stop making unrealistic promises about income to its distributors. To find out what Quickstar was up to, we took our hidden cameras to a recruitment meeting in New Jersey, where hundreds held around the country each week, and where hundreds of thousands of Quickstar faithful get their start. And the first thing we hear is how easy it is to make it in Quickstar. If you're so much oh, I need my so much If you invest in it, I'm allergic to little things. It makes me break out into giggles grin. Long videos, please. Thank you, Janet. Appreciate you. I will do a long video. Don't worry, it's coming. But you motherfuckers barely even watched my Doug Brooks interview. It has like 4,000 views. It's been out a week. Come on now. Wake up. In your business. Mm -hmm. This is your own business. You could generate the next 12 to 18 months. I'm sorry. How much? You're making um, more than 250 quarter of a million? The recruiter, Greg Fredericks, sure gets our attention. Greg Fredericks is a cuck. Oh, who, who, okay, this is a long, this is a long message. Let's see who wrote this one. I have a guess, but let me look in the back office here, in my Primerica back office. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't who I was expecting. I actually don't know this person. Uh, so You know what's also tough for me is some of you guys have a different name on each social media platform. So some of you I have talked to probably multiple times and I don't even know it because you have a different name on Instagram, a different name on Discord, a different name on YouTube. So then when I finally figure it out, I'm like, oh, you're this person. Okay. Okay, let's see. What did they say? Uh, Cowboy Hat Admirer said, you're a straight arrow. I'm so glad your broke mindset mom held you back so you could show us your greatness now. I keep a notebook in my PJs so I can take notes while I sleep. Don't let anyone steal your dreams. So true. So true. Thank you for that, cowboy hat admirer. You're wrong. You're fucking poor. Doug Brooks' interview is so slept on, frankly. So, so true. Um, Dave Vaughn says, it's a bit discouraging to watch this, this, and realize the government is still pounding the same drum on these issues and getting nowhere. 
Ah, uh, well, it's a public awareness thing. It's a public awareness thing. So, you know, more bags, y'all. We're, we're more than halfway done this dono goal. Come on, let's bag it up. <laughs> my favorite comment of all time about me was on my friend. Uh, my friend Philip is a YouTuber as well, and he has like half a million subscribers. And in the subreddit about him, somebody like people are always talking shit on Reddit. Pussies, keyboard warriors who they never use their real name, never use their real picture. And they'll post just hater shit for no reason. One time somebody commented this on Philip's subreddit and it's my favorite comment about me ever because I used to appear in his videos quite frequently. Somebody said, Marco is an asshole. My girlfriend donated a dollar to him on his stream, and all he said was, we got to get that bag up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it's so funny because, A, that is true. I probably did say that, but it, it was just so funny to hear it described by somebody who obviously, like, didn't watch me regularly or didn't know, like, my sense of humor. They just kn knew me from my friend Philip's videos. So I was like, I, I get, I get why it seems like it was such a douchebag thing to do. But at the same time, it's like, I'm doing sort of like satire of these MLM gurus who are always just saying bullshit. So <laughs> <laughs> fuck, just me saying to somebody, you know, you watch clips of whole, there's literally compilations on YouTube of like wholesome streamers accepting donations with like, Oh, Twenty dollars. You don't have to do that. Oh my God. Let me, oh, I'm so great. And they like cry and shit. People donate to me. I'm like more, more. <laughs> where, where is the bag? Where is it? Where is the bag? I'm looking for it. More. We gotta get that bag up. The only person who has a presses buttons that say you're broke, you're fucking poor after people donate. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I think it's more actually real to do that than to be one of these people that's like, I mean, imagine if you were actually like a gigantic YouTuber like PewDiePie or Ninja and you did a live stream and you read out all the messages and bro, that would get old so quick. I literally saw a PewDiePie fundraiser live stream once and during the stream he raised like $200,000, not even joking, in, in a single stream. Imagine if the whole time he's like, Oh wow, oh wow, a thousand dollars, oh wow. Shut up! So, uh, no, I think it's funny. I think it's funnier and more real than being like, oh my goodness. Although I am appreciative, you know, I do appreciate it. <laughs> All right, let's listen. He says he himself has made it big on the Quick Star plan. I owe nobody nothing. You know, and today, you know, I'm looking at a million dollar home, a thousand dollar Rolex just for kicks. And I just got a brand new week and navigator sitting out front, pay for cash. So, I think you're good. And he says those kinds of riches are ours for the taking. And on top of getting rich, we'd also be able to make our own hours and spend more time with our family. So, at another meeting, after paying $200 for a starter kit, we sign up and are officially. I, I can smell, I know you guys can't. You're not where I am, but I can smell the scent of syrup. Like as though someone is cooking pancakes around me. I can smell syrup very strongly. Does that mean I'm having a stroke? Introduced to the Fredericks team. First step, think positive. So I don't put anything into my head that's going to cause me to be thinking outside my positive world. That means no TV, no reading newspapers. Second step, and perhaps the most important, we're told to buy motivational books and tapes from top Quickstar wow. distributors. Dexter, Dexter Yeager. I would recommend you start reading through 15 minutes to about a half hour. Those books and tapes are going to cost us, but one of Frederick's associates says they hold the key to our success. But it's not just buying the books and tapes, which can go for about $60 a month. We're also urged to spend money on seminars for about another $50 a month. And within days of becoming Quickstar distributors, we're told of one big event we shouldn't miss. This will be the best year. One, two, three. A few hundred dollars later, we find ourselves on a bus ride, a 14-hour bus ride from New Jersey to South Carolina, for something called Spring Leadership Weekend. To Fredericks and others, it's not just a business trip. Syrup is a ghost. So true. It means you're Canadian. So true. Peace out, straw babies. Catch you on the Ponder replay, as Rihanna says. Or Rihanna, sorry. 
Marco likes trains. What's this now? Marco also sends me a check every month to drop bags to start Dono trains. So true. He didn't hire and fire himself enough times to succeed. What's up, Clarelicious? If it was burnt toast, it would be a stroke. Got it. It's a pilgrimage. Well, we ask you for a spirit of openness so that we might go down to Greenville, South Carolina, Lord, that we might be changed. And in Jesus' mighty name, say, amen. Let's have a great weekend. At the arena in South Carolina, people have been sleeping outside like teenagers at a rock concert. There was not just book tapes every month. There was tapes of the week, tapes of the day. Imagine that. Just the same fucking mindless motivational babble. I can't believe we used to watch TV that looked this awful, right? I remember my showing my uncle a video game back in 2009. The video game was Batman Arkham Asylum. He was like, is this real? I was like, no, it's animated. He's like, when a cut scene came on, he's like, no way, this is real. Now I look back at that game, I'm like, how did you think this was real? <laughs> we arrived the next day. It's not long before the crowd swelled. We're part of a fevered rush to get inside. 15,000 at the arena as we thrill to a carefully choreographed show that promises money. And everything that comes with it. Thank you, Why Not Review. Yes, I do it. I do it for the bag. I do it for the bag. We're urged by those successful Quickstar distributors on stage to dream big like they do. We've got four homes and 32 cars and we got all that. What do we do now? And we're just saying, let's buy a country. <laughs> the excitement builds with each success story. This man says he once ran a car wash. His vision of financial freedom moves the crowd to a chant we hear over and over again. I cannot believe I've never seen this. <laughs> the speakers Ooh, freedom flush that stinking job. Wow. Are treated like superstars, all living testaments to what happens when you follow the Quick Star plan. But there's one who's become an icon. If Quick Star, Quick Star is the company Bad Dog Sports says he was in. Are is a religion. This man is its pope. His name is Bill Britt, and legend has it he's worth millions. Bill oh, Britt, I've heard of Bill Britt. Because of Quickstar. I got a business with five reasons. Good reasons. First of all, it was money. The second reason I got in was for money. <laughs> that, that's all it's like. <laughs> so devoted are the followers in the crowd with us become sleep deprived afraid to miss out on advice that will make them millionaires such devotion is hard to fathom but we see just how far it goes on the last night of the weekend when a single candle is lit soon the dark arena becomes a tabernacle a shrine to the that is so dangerous look at all that fire no way that would be allowed it's our dream not today anyways all those people holding flames <laughs> Is that John Smith? Yeah, it is, basically. For some, a solemn and tearful promise to their leader. But are the leaders keeping their promises to the faithful? What the thousands lighting candles in this arena don't realize is that 99.9% .9 of them will not only never get rich from Quickstar, wow. won't even come close. He's out, Stephanie. In your opinion, what is it? I would use the word scam. When we return, what's really going on behind the promises of financial windfalls, fabulous mansions, and fancy cars? It's hurt us. It's hurt a lot of people. But Is Robert in this? Marco hasn't seen a Led Zeppelin concert. It's so true. I was in Brit Worldwide. Damn, Chris G. Dark secret that left some distributors in desperate trouble. Thumbs up the stream, by the way, y'all. Almost 200 viewers. Thumbs up the ting. Returning to our story, the pitch for a company called Quickstar has attracted hundreds of thousands of followers with stories of financial success. Beautiful homes, expensive cars, the good life. All you have to do, they say, is buy and sell the company's products. But Dateline's investigation found there's something they don't tell you. Once again, Chris Hansen. The freedom to flush that stinking job. That's the product. And that's exactly what Eric Scheibler did. I thought if I could create a six-figure income... Uh, and oh, I know this guy. This guy, Eric Scheibler, was mentioned, I think, in Pontinomics, and he was also one of the speakers on the MLM conference last year, I think. I recognize Eric Scheibler. Spend time with my family. 
I'd do anything for that. For Scheibler, at the time, a federal auditor, had heard the stories and seen the videos. You know, we got up in the morning as we wish. Don't get up to the alarm clock very often. Uh, that's uh, something we sort of gave up and we got rid of the job. Scheibler signed up, and after a few years working part-time in the business, ceremoniously shot his own alarm clock. He triumphantly quit his day job, and with a limo waiting, it was party time. He walked into the welcoming arms of his family and friends in the business. Goodbye, boss. Hello, family. That's right. Exactly. It seemed to be the American dream. What does that cost? Probably about $120. But instead of a life of leisure and more time with his family, he says he worked day and night, buying the tapes, attending the rallies. Still, he made nowhere near the six-figure salary he thought he would. In fact, in his okay, he wrote the book Merchants of Deception. Nice, I need to check that out. This year, he made $34,000, no, and even that didn't the last. Book. What do you have today? Uh, we're destitute, financially. It's, uh, we'll change that, but financially we have nothing as a specific result of this. We wow. heard it again and again. People who worked the Quick Start plan only to suffer in the end. It's hurt us. It's hurt a lot of people. Vicki and Lindy Max say they not only didn't make money, they lost more than $35,000 over a five-year period, much of it on books, tapes, and traveling to rallies. That, by the way, is like a year at Harvard. No kidding. I know that. We know that. So why, despite the promises, did the Max and thousands of others end up on the losing end of the Quick Star dream? This man says it's because it's based on a lie, and he should know. His name is Bo Short, and for a time, he was selling the dream himself as one of Quickstar's brightest stars. I will tell you this, I do not want you to leave excited. I want you to leave committed. But he says he began to realize he was part of a mass deception. You see these videos of these attractive couples driving Porsches and Ferraris, panoramic shots of the palatial man. Hey, thank you, Kristen, for the order on the merch store. Appreciate you, Kristen. Enjoy that cult member tea from alwaysmarkomerch.com. We love to see it. We love to see the goons rocking up to the uh, the goon mecca, the cult, uh, the cult Amway rally, as if 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 you will, rocking their cult member and anti pyramid shirts. We love to see it. We love it. Right. Is that actually achievable by selling quick start products? Based on my experiences, no. How are these people getting all this stuff then? There is another business. And it's a business that is completely separate from Quickstar. A hidden business that most recruits don't realize exists. Short says many of those high-level distributors singing the praises of Quickstar on stage are actually making most of their money by selling motivational books, tapes, and seminars. Not Quickstar's cosmetics, soaps, and electronics. This was the dirty little secret. That's exactly what it was. Absolutely. That's not what you And do. Lindy, also, thank you for your order on the merch store. I saw that earlier today. Here at the convention. No, and that's not what you're told in somebody's living room when you see it either. Or yesterday, rather. In fact, about 20 high-level distributors are part of an exclusive club, one that those hundreds of thousands of other distributors don't get to join. For years, only a privileged few, including Bill Britt, have run hugely profitable businesses, selling all those books, tapes, and seminars, things the rank-and-file distributors can't sell themselves, are told over and over again they need to buy in order to succeed. Anything you need to become successful, you have at your disposal. All you have to be willing to do for a nominal city is to start purchasing the materials that will help you to build your business. Why are the recruits? Wow. Recruits told to listen to the tapes and read the books over and over and over again. Because it creates again. Because it creates a dependency and it creates a habit that keeps you bound to that business. What a bug. This is very sad, man. Well. Vicki Mack knows all about that. Even though she's a medical doctor, a pediatrician with a thriving practice, she found herself slaving away in the pursuit of new quick star recruits. After all, new recruits mean new sales, and new sales mean more money. We'd be out just even hanging out at McDonald's, at the play places, talking to parents. At McDonald's? Yeah. Now, you graduated from Berkeley. Mm-hmm. Went to medical school. Mm-hmm. Making a very fine salary as a pediatrician, yeah. and yet you're in a mall and a McDonald's on a Saturday trying to sell this thing? Yeah. Uh, None wow. of this surprises Bo Short. Not the commitment of time and money, not the emotion, as we saw at the rally we attended. There's a man with tears. There are probably many people with tears. And not all of those tears are because they're committed to it. 
many of those tears are because they, they have worked diligently and are not any closer. If this is not a legitimate business opportunity, then in reality, in your opinion, what is it? I would use the word scam. That's what I was thinking, too. Bo Schwartz says when he and several other high-level distributors began to suspect the same thing, they confronted the company's managing director, Ken McDonald. And I said, Ken, I believe that people are stealing money and you're letting it happen. And he didn't respond. And I, and I remember looking at him a few minutes later, I said, Ken, kick some of them out. Show people you're serious. And he looked at me and said, what happened to the business? Short says the company acknowledged it had been aware of the problem for decades. How could that be? Remember when we said Quickstar sounded a little like Amway, a company which drew the ire of the federal government several years back for making false promises to recruits? Well, it turns out Quickstar isn't just like Amway. It was Amway. Quickstar is just its new incarnation with many of the same players. Eric Scheidler and the Max began as Amway distributors. And many of those same high-level Quickstar distributors also began with Amway. So did Bo Short, who says he decided to walk away from the business and all the money that came with it. You were a poster boy for this outfit. You were on the company yacht. Are you now turning around and biting the hand that fed you? I don't care if anyone thinks I'm biting anyone's hand that fed me. I'm telling the truth. Quickstar declined to be interviewed on camera, but its managing director, Ken McDonald, says in a letter that Short's recollection of events is misleading, and he questioned Short's motivation for speaking out. Short does run a small direct marketing firm himself, and Quickstar considers him a potential competitor. Quickstar also says it prohibits its independent distributors from making exaggerated claims about income. As for the company's income, most of that comes from the sale of products, not from tapes and books and tickets to rally. Every MLM officially says officially speaking, that we don't allow income claims, we don't allow lifestyle claims. I mean, I shouldn't say. But I made a video in 2021, two videos about a certain company who I shan't name at this moment. And I did a ruthless, relentless, barrage Instagram campaign where every single day, by the way, this campaign resulted in my Instagram being taken down 15 times from like spam bot attacks and reporting attacks every time I got it back, of course. But this Instagram campaign of stories was basically every day I would wake up and I would go log into my Finsta account and I would look at all the people I followed who were high level of this MLM company. And you know, these were people, the people with the highest ranks, the people that were speaking on the stage at the events. And I would just every day go on, go watch their stories and systematically screenshot or screen record every time they made an earnings claim, go switch over to my main account and post it side by side with the picture or page pulled straight from their company's own social media guidelines handbook that said, you're not allowed to post this. And I would, I was basically puppeteering the social media accounts of this entire company because for example, there was one point where, um, like a guy would post a picture on a yacht minutes later, I would post it on my story next to the company's policy saying, uh, you're not allowed to have a picture of a yacht on Instagram. And I would tag the company, of course, and their, their company's compliance. And within moments, within minutes, the post would be removed. So, and then I would take a screenshot of the before and after of their feed and post that and show, yep, they deleted it. I was right. Another guy posted a picture of him on a private jet. Hey, we're on the way to the next event. Get tickets. Link in my description. Do, do, do. I post it. Minutes later, it's gone. So all these people, it was just such a smoke and mirrors game, like, all these people had such bloated fake Instagram followers, which you could tell. I mean, if somebody has a million followers and each post only gets 30 comments and half of them are the post, the original like poster replying to the 15 comments they got, uh, you can tell it's fake. Just there's no way you were a legit, you know, public figure with hundreds of thousands or a million plus followers and you only got a, a 30 comments or 100 comments. Like that there's no way that engagement would be so low. So I was just showing how bullshit it was. And I was controlling these people's Instagrams because 
they were, you know, the whole thing was dependent on them posting deceptive earnings claims and I was getting all of their deceptive earnings claims taken down. So what could they do? So they're, they're getting into, you know, quarrels with each other, you know, other, other people at the top of the pyramid or at corporate would get on the phone with the people making the claims saying, Marco just got you on their, on his story. Uh, you know, you're fucking it up for us. So there was this internal quarrel amongst them, even though they were all doing the same thing, they'd be fighting with each other. You're going to get the company shut down. No, you're going to get the company shut down. You're making us look bad. No, you're making us look bad. And I was just puppeteering the whole thing. It was fucking beautiful. And I'm going to do it again. Watch. I'm going to do it again. I'm gearing up to do it again with this next, uh, this next expose that I'm going to drop. And there's a reason I've been waiting for it. So let's continue. In its contracts, the company discloses that some distributors do make money from those sales, but that buying those materials is strictly voluntary. As for Bill Britt and some of the other top-level distributors we saw on stage, they also declined our request for an on-camera interview. But their lawyer told us in a letter that the income claims we heard are not promoted or endorsed by Britt and those other top distributors. He also wrote that buying the books and tapes is voluntary and that how much they make from those sales is not available. So how much does a Quickstar distributor really make? Well, only about $1,400 per year. What's the source for that figure? It's Quickstar itself. You can find it in the fine print of the company's own registration materials. $1,400. That's $248,600 less than what our recruiter, Greg Fredericks, said we could make. We caught up with him at one of his recruitment meetings. We're doing a story on Quickstar and Quickstar distributors. Okay. And these folks here work with me. Oh, great. We wanted to ask you a couple questions. Sure. What up, Jimmy? Hey, I just want to make sure I heard you right now. First, we reminded him about the money he said we could make. You're making a, more than 250 quarter of a million? Are you really making? How about disclosing a, a quarter of a million dollars? I'm not working nearly 15 to 16 hours a week. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to disclose you my information as well as my personal income. But what, what do you mean? You already did. They got you on camera fucking doing it. He did let slip when he didn't know the camera was rolling was that one of the elite distributors we saw on stage is making most of his money from the motivation business. Probably three quarters of it. And that's from what we need to seminar, holding seminars? Seminars, rallies, functions, motivational tools, tapes, books, uh, speaking engagements, appearances. But he didn't seem to remember saying that. I don't know. From, from, from the guy books. That I know. No, you're mentioning a number here, three quarters of what his income. That's what you said, not what I said. Did I say that? And that's about all he had to say. Well, I, can't, I just like that remark. Later, we found out something else about Fredericks. Back in the mid '90s, he was arrested and charged with possession of crack cocaine, and is still wanted by police to face charges in North Carolina. Ooh. What about others involved in Quickstar? Both the FBI and the Criminal Division of the IRS are making separate inquiries into at least two top distributors not focused on in this report. In the meantime, hundreds of thousands of true believers are drawn into Quickstar every year, dazzled by the promise of the good life. But unless things change, says Bo Short, it's a broken promise that will leave broken hearts. I think people are being hurt because understand the majority of the people in that audience believe or desperately, desperately want to believe. And they sit there with their hearts in it. What about them? <laughs> Some former high-level distributors have filed a lawsuit against Quickstar in federal court, accusing the company of antitrust violations and conspiracy. Quick Such a body bag. All right, should we get on with it then to Losing Fortunes Radio? Let's check it out and see if, it's the, if the audio has been processed. I think it has. Uh-oh, we, we got another merch order, I think. Uh-oh, not another merch order. Rolling in the bags. Oh, this is from, I know who this is from. This is from Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Yes, sir. All right, let's 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 check it out. Here we go, ready? Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partner, we are here to help our PM marketing network lead customers build their businesses and make the world a better place. At Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and the people it means to you. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Sorry, I actually got to... I actually got to pull this up on the iHeart page because, uh, yeah, I got to pull this up on the iHeart page so I can go 1.5 speed. Oh, motherfucker. No, I don't want to watch. What is this ad even for? 
what is it even for? Doing dishes. Let's see if I could guess. Coca-Cola. No, Zillow. No. Magnum. Oh, Quest Trade. Fuck. I would have never guessed that. Commercials are so dumb, huh? Spending money on this shit. All right, here we go. Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com for anybody that might be unfamiliar with my voice. It is still Peter Bingles for those people that are listening in. We have new listeners all the time as a result of that. We always like to tell you some of the reasons why we're here. Building Fortunes Radio started way back when. Bro, you do not have new listeners. What are you talking about? And I was, it was a tail, towards the tail end of 2012. And follow along with your Building Fortunes Radio bingo. I just put the link in the chat. Cowboy hat, yeah, you need the cowboy hat. We could, we could, we could talk about it. We could talk about it. Thank you, Lindy. Got my copy of Ponzinomics using your link the other day. It is such a great book. I just actually finished it. Finished listening to the audio book again yesterday. All right. Beginning part of 2013, I was helping a friend who was kind of in a tough spot mentally um, with some legal challenges that she was having thrown at her unjustly. And as a result of those types of things, I said to her, I said, you know, you can't let the press get you down and the people telling the one version of the story get you down. We really need to get you on the radio or get something. I got to have your voice be heard. Somebody's got to be able to tell your side of the story. So we started to do a radio show. And I quickly realized that, you know what, we need to do a radio show too. We meaning the MLM world, uh, because the stuff that we were talking about on the other radio show were really great, but more like other than M MLM stuff. So I said, you know, we're going to get started with this, and that's how Building Fortunes Radio kind of got started. So I picked a name, always like Building, and then Fortunes was just kind of natural because we had our affiliate program called Building Fortunes. And as a result of all of those things, we started doing radio shows. Well, uh, a couple years into the radio shows, again, we started towards the tail end of 2012, beginning part of 2013. Uh, somewhere a couple years into that, I ran across a website called Seeking Alpha that was talking a lot about Herbalife being sued, if you will, Seeking beta. That's Peter's version. By the FTC or... In oh, he's talking about the Vima lady that was on crack? Well, who is that? Jody, Jody Bear? Is that who? Lindy, what are you saying, Lindy? Crap meant to do $5 USD. Oh, appreciate you, Lindy. It's okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let's see. Who? who oh, uh, not another new merch order. <laughs> not Dave Vaughn making the merch order. Not Dave Vaughn. Where is... Let's go. <laughs> Let's see what Davon picked up. Davon picked up some nice stuff. You're broke. Davon got that anti-pyramid tea and that anti-pyramid mug. You're fucking poor. Thank you, Davon. Dang. Thank you, Dave. You are a G. You are a G. Oh, another one, too! Oh, <laughs> the money bags! Who is this guy? Oh, shit. This one is from, uh, from Beyond, I think. The anti-pyramid tea as well. Gosh darn, man. Woo! Rolling in the bag. Rolling in the bags. We'd love to see it. I actually... I don't have the pro version of Shopify, so I don't actually know how much profit I make off these let's see next payout yeah it let me see it doesn't actually tell me the how much it cost me versus how much money i got paid who fucking knows hopefully may hopefully we're making money you know all right if you look up the dash you'll find those radio shows don debrantes that woman has changed her name three times now though amazing All right. The way they keep up such a high level of motivation with this show, even with zero viewers, is amazing. Well, Scott Johnson's paying for it. Of course, Peter's excited. And Scott Johnson's just on a holy pilgrimage, so he doesn't give a fuck. Investigated by the FTC um, for a whole bunch of reasons. And I found that the articles and people writing the articles... Building were Fortunes Radio used to be called The Dash. That sucks. ...were pretty fascinating as a publicly traded... Uh, company Herbalife is, and the people that were writing some articles were not the tip. Thank you, Johnny. Enjoying the anti pyramid tea and Kilakina. The anti pyramid one will be my second order. Love that. Just got to see how the cult member fits. Oh, it'll be nice. You'll enjoy that embroidered stitching. You'll you'll love that. 
I'm assuming when Robert cited Peter being fined and sued, it had to do with him helping her. Actually, no. When Peter was mentioned, by the way, Peter Mingles, the guy that we beef with every week, this guy right here, Peter Mingles, Ming, he was mentioned in Robert's book, Ponzi-nomics, in relation with uh, a Ponzi scheme called Zeke Rewards. And... Uh, yeah, you can look that one up. One of the biggest Ponzi schemes actually in American history, Zeke Rewards. So his name was mentioned in connection with that. So all good. Typical, um, you know, bashing MLM kind of people that had no knowledge about anything. It was really great information, factual stuff, you know, showing some charts and looking at uh, maybe the, because it was publicly traded company, some of the documents and some of the statistics and some forward thinking motions, et cetera. And uh, Michael Johnson was the, CEO of Herbalife at that time, still is now, and he was the highest paid CEO in the world at that time in a publicly traded company. So I found it all very fascinating. The gentleman writing those articles was Roger Van Blissingen, and Roger um, had Let's his skip phone ahead. number of times with Amway. Whooped myself, something happened. It's like Amway. I don't get it. Like, I, I understand the, the idea of events. Self that said, oh, geez, well, I guess you're talking about the same thing that I did. And the other part is going to be is like, I don't know how many people are going to want to hear just about the tools, but you know, we'll run it for a while. So you know, I did a radio show a little bit earlier, and there's been recruiting in our industry. And Jesus we spoke Christ, about I'm skipping. Bunch of I think 342 slide PowerPoint took like three or four hours to, to describe the whole thing. He spent, I've heard anywhere between 50 and 75 million dollars just doing the research. Um, and uh, you know, he actually had a, a movie. He didn't have it made. It was made, and he was part of it. Made, and he was part of it. Uh, called betting on zero, which means he was betting um, that he could take the Herbalife stock to zero or nearly zero, just like he did several years earlier with a uh, banking mortgage type company. You know, back in the early 2000s, he was saying this is a big mess. This mortgage, this whole mortgage environment is a big mess, and uh, particularly this one big company. I think it was M. MBMA or something like that. But anyway, um, they complained. MBMA. You know, they they even had the New York State government investigate Bill Ackman because they said that he was making false claims and and because he was shorting that particular company's stock. And you know, around 2007 or so, when the the whole mortgage thing collapsed, uh, this this bank slash mortgage company also collapsed, and Bill Ackman cleaned up. I mean, he he made a lot of money and helped kick up. And so Bill Ackman sued. Hire uh, an outside firm. Well, uh, phone apps now. They used to sell cassette tapes. Now it's phone apps, and, and now it's phone apps. The tools compared to Amway. And the real kicker here isn't the money, because I don't have a problem with people making money. It's the fact that they pretend that all of their success, their financial success, came from Amway, and they are silent on the money that comes from the tools, except for these, tool you know, handful of of uh, exceptions. Only after they get kicked out, um, you'll never hear them talk about that while they're in, only after they get kicked out, for obvious reasons. I mean, the whole scam. And Amway has it, Herbalife has it. I don't think Herbalife says it's about the upper level distributors making all this money from the tools. At least, I, I think number one, they're incompetent. Number two, they're very bureaucratic. Uh, and those things tend to go. Dude, what the fuck are they? Why are they talking about Herbalife? They and, go together, right? If, if you're and betting incompetent, on zero. bureaucracy commitment, um, so all, Are they going to talk about my Doug Brooks interview at all, ever? All that money has really, but if they want to get reelected. What the fuck? That's in their show. But, um, yeah, there goes my alarm again. Peter, if you want to play that music, I'll be right back. Um, oh, he has an alarm for when I go live. Oh, yeah, because I went live while they were in the middle of their show. Let's listen. But if they want to get reelected, and people are speaking up and complaining about thumbs it. up the stream y'all 195 watching let's crack 200 come on i know we can do it y'all come on thumbs up the thing thumbs up the thing about these scams uh, and, and complaining about the right things by the way you know complaining about things like tool scams and lack of retail sales um then they're going to change their minds they're going to say hey um we appreciate the money you guys are giving us but uh yeah, there goes my alarm again peter if you want to play that music i'll be right back Wow, so they have GTA. Wow, so they have Grand Theft Auto music as well as me? Insane. By the way, Jimmy, this is hilarious. I see that you talked about uh, how Holton Bugs is being exposed by CoffeeZilla. This is true, but what company was Holton Bugs in? I know the name, but I didn't know um, that. Yeah, I can't believe he has the... No, Peter is playing the, the San Andreas song for some reason. 
All right, I'm back. I just turned off all my alarms, Peter. <laughs> I don't know why that came on again. Uh, still there on again. Uh, still there, right? Can you hear me? Yep, we're here. Hello? We're ready to go. Okay. Uh, yep, we're just here. Sure. Yep, just want to make sure. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, to me, people have to speak up and speak up about the right things, um, or else they're just not going to get the FTC's attention. Uh, they have to they have to talk about things that are illegal, not upsetting, uh, because there's no laws that say that if you're telling somebody something that you don't like, that that's illegal. By the way, in the comments on Glenn's videos with uh, Scott, where uh, they're talking about me or whatever, Scott is, of course, in the comments replying to every single person being like, look, for example, I'll give you an example here. Scott is in the comments, not of this one. Let's see this one. Here's Scott here in this one. Oh, you guys are commenting on it too. Uh, he talks about his wife sitting right next to him while he, yeah, look right here. Damien says, no impact at all solely because he's 100% hiding his behavior from his family. Scott says, as my wife sits next to me during the show and laughs, there's no way. There's no way, Scott, that that happens. No way. <laughs> you guys are hilarious for going and antagonizing them in, in the comments. <laughs> You guys are, are, are a riot. You guys are hilarious. All right. Let's continue. Um, it, it just doesn't go anywhere. Oh, traders um, don't now the other okay, yes. The big problem with MLMs, and I think this is either universal or nearly uni universal amongst MLMs, and that is the lack of retail sales. And when we say lack of retail sales, we're talking about sales to people who are not part of the MLM compensation plan. They're customers. Um, and the problem with MLMs is the products are typically way overpriced, you know, at least two or three times more expensive than a comparable product on the market. And it's really hard to money. Who, who should care about that? Uh, it, it, you know, it, uh, you, um, but generally, if you sell as much or really, and we know by these two settlements, all the audits. Only the courts saw the audits. With, with MLMs try to do that all the time. But in fact, they are two separate. Perfect for MLM scams. And I saw all this stuff and started to quit recognizing your level of naivety. The domain is going to be a little bit like FTX, whereas like... And actually the DOJ, in my opinion, is shit. ...your finger and put it in her little, you know, testing device and find all these diseases you have as a whole bunch of bullshit. And she, she basically... Right, that's part of the reason Elizabeth you get a there. license is to know the rules and to know for. Um, you know, we don't... Somebody accused her of, you know, and it's happened before with her and others. Um, there's been people that are they just talking about random different scams that happen on this episode that have just left or don't need to complain about the right stuff do in the past not so much they, they should be able to do it without a bunch of complaints um but they've explained to me i, I talked to an ftc attorney a few years ago i said earlier you know don't assume just because somebody else wrote a complaint that they're that the ftc is going to do anything because they're not they have to get some certain number and there's way more than enough people out there uh, if they wrote complaints a disgruntled employee, probably mostly right. So E L N period while providing the representatives. All the um, I mean, all the illegal aliens are here now, right? They, they're all coming right. across the board. They really don't have a good answer on how to buy just the normal everyday products that they loan is a major cost. Just to, um, financially, as uh, you were selling, wow. me, and it's a whole bunch of things. Function make them, you know, more streamlined and more permanent. Uh, wow. I titled this stream and made the thumbnail of this stream, Losing Fortunes Radio, The Showdown. Ooh, I fully expected both of them to be in a fit of rage. One, because well, Scott, because we revealed his identity. And he obviously was not happy about that, us showing his face. Ming, because we found these other pictures of him and we were, re we were reacting to and roasting some of his YouTube videos. And as I showed earlier in this stream, Peter 
took down all of his YouTube videos, every single one, he took them down off of his page. I'll show you again in case you don't believe me. Peter Mingles. Peter Mingles used to have like a whole bunch of videos. Now he has nothing. You can, there's not even a videos tab. Nothing. Just his bio, basically. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, here's his Facebook. Damn. Damn. Oh, his Twitter. Oh, he changed his profile picture to this dog. Dave Vaughn, why do you follow him? Why does Dave Vaughn follow him on Twitter? Great question. I guess keeping an eye on him. And Scott denying, refusing to even talk about it on their own show. Wow, they got bodied so bad. They got bodied so bad that they don't even want to press it any further. I think we have officially come to the end of the road regarding me and BFR. Marco. Marco. Yeah. Fuck yeah, you stupid fucking asshole. Wow. After nearly three years of this back and forth, they finally folded because we found a couple pictures of Tex. That's all it took? That's all it took was figuring out that his wife's name was Denise? Well, he said that on his own, on their show. And then us finding the picture? Oh my God, these guys are so fucking scared, bro. These guys are so scared about what I know. It's over. I can't believe this. They just did a whole normal ass episode after literal months of back to back to back to back non uninterrupted streams talking solely about me and how stupid I am. And on this one, they're talking about what Elizabeth Holmes and different scams going on and how MLM and blah, blah, blah. After. Oh, my God. Yeah. And says they're officially afraid. He's scared. He's not talking about you anymore. Wow, bro, you scared them off. Not gonna lie, they owned you. Yeah, you got me, Beyond. You scared them off. I think you won. Oof. They for sure had a conversation where they were like, we can't talk about always stupid narco anymore. And by the way, check this out. If you go to their blog talk radio page for Building Fortunes, there's another episode that never came out. It's called, look here, right here. This was today. It says, today at 1 p.m., Scott Johnson and Samantha Broom on Scientology and Narco Anon. So I'm guessing he was going to do this episode to try and talk about how my goons are a cult. Can't wait for you to bring down the company who shall not be named. Yes. Get them. Thank you, and Appreciate you. <laughs> So look at this. There was an episode that was supposed to come out today at 1 p.m. called Scott Johnson and Samantha Broom on Scientology and Narco Anon. So they were going to be, I'm assuming, talking about Always Stupid Narco. And listen, the whole episode is one minute long. Look. You've been listening to Building Fortunes Radio on Building Willing to Work For. And it's so just the, the outro music for Losing Fortunes. Bro, after this... After this pick and this pick, I swear to God, they had a conversation. They're like, look, Marco's just bodying us. Whoo, wow. Have I won? Is it, did I win? Is this really happening, bro? What the heck? You're not even going to talk about my conference speech. You're not going to talk about my Doug Brooks video. Maybe this new video, if it goes viral, it'll, it'll coax them back out to talking about me. Or maybe they're just trying to beat me to the punch of not talking about them next week by them not talking about me this week. 
Wow. What up, Rachel Alexandria? Yeah, this is a crazy time. And Paz says, I'm not convinced this is over. It was a good run. Is this the end of an era? Right, Denise? Hi. Wow. Wow. That was the most boring episode, too. There's no way. There was no way they just decided to stop talking about me with no mention at all from going from every episode being about me to just having a very straight up, you know, simple conversation with no, no joking around or nothing and no mention of me. I mean, I did skim it, but somebody else go listen to it on 2x speed. Tell me if they mentioned me once. It's the creatine. Yeah. So much for the new viewers. Wow. They'll forget in a couple of months and start again. I think Scott really doesn't like his picture being up on my streams. That's why. We finally find out he doesn't like the troll he is. We finally found out he doesn't look like the troll he is and he leaves us? Yeah. Wow. Ming taking down the videos was definitely waving the, light fla waving the white flag. Retitle this episode, the final nail in the coffin episode. Imagine the guest. I imagine the guest canceled. Yeah, as always. Oof. Remember when Scott said it was a nothing burger? I have mixed feelings too. You broke them. You haven't won until you read the fan fiction. Yeah, Beyond has Losing Fortunes Radio fan fiction. I, I also don't feel that it's over. There's no way, right? Yeah, people don't. Hopi Nay says, people that obsessed don't stop. What? They can't quit you. <laughs> Sheila says, I just bought the Losing Fortunes t-shirt. <laughs> After all these years, they're not done. It, it's in their DNA at this point. Yeah. D nice was the golden bullet. They canceled you. They'll do it again. They can't leave the cult that easily. Denise, maybe Denise found out. Yeah. It's not like he's ugly either. Why is he mad? Damn, sunken <laughs> place in between the pictures of Ming. Wow. Wow. Maybe Scott's done self-reflection and realized being a bully on the, to women on the internet is not the way to go. Nah, he ain't learned that. <laughs> Play the pee dribble soundbite. Wow. So finally, I waited for their episode to be done to react to them. We've been live almost two hours going over Amway videos and... Uh, Glenn's videos and whatever the fuck else and they never even talked about me, bro What on earth is going on? Glenn played them and they didn't even realize it. Wow 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 Pull up the picture of Scott in his 30s. Oh, bro. I don't have it saved, but it's in the discord and boy is he sexy Wow I got it. Let me call Glenn right now. I think it's morning time in Australia. So I could I could get him on. Sheila, thank you for the for the uh, for the order. Yes, Sheila ordered the Losing Fortunes radio shirt as well. Oh my goodness, you guys. Let me call Glenn. Let's see if he's available on Facebook. I got to call him on Facebook. Let's see. Let me call my boy Glenn right quick. Where is he at? Here we go. I'm calling Glenn. If Glenn can get, jump on here with us, that would be way better than... Oh, it's 1 p.m. in Australia. Perfect. Let me call him. It's ringing. Call Scott. Yeah, I should call Scott. I'm going to call Scott, too. Let's buy the show. $50. Yeah, buy the whole domain for 50 bucks. Ooh, we need We need Glenn's take on this. What up, Pam? They ruined the bingo. Scott's wife was not happy to be in the show. Ooh, body bag. Let's keep his picture up. I didn't hear them. How you get canceled by your ops. I didn't even hear them mention any other anti-MLM creators. Scott usually makes it a point to go out of his way and go, that's what these other stupid anti-MLM creators don't get. No answer. Come on, Glenn. Okay, let me call Scott Johnson. Where's the fucking thing? Oh, you like this phone case from alwaysmarklemerch.com? The anti-pyramid phone case? Okay. Here we go. This is insane. Are my fake websites still up? Great question. Alwaysmarko.gay. 
right? Yeah, alwaysmarco.lol. Oh, it's still up. It's still up. What's this? I'm going to try and masturbate in public and hopefully nobody catches me. I'm going to try and masturbate. <laughs> I don't know what that what video is that from. Masturbate in public and hopefully nobody catches me. I'm going to them looping it. I think it's from that same short film that I was in where they got the wiener audio. How about this one? I hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good holiday. Oh, me saying, <laughs> me leaving the voicemail saying I'm Coffeezilla. Okay, here, let me call, uh, let me call them. Here you go. I'm calling Scott. He's watching right now. No way, bro. No way. Let me call his other number. What the hell? What the hell? Let me call Peter. This is crazy. 214. Oh, this is Scott's 214 number. Let me call this one. That was Peter that I just tried calling, I think. Yeah, here. Put this in here. Call Scott. This is crazy. I can't believe this. Okay, one... Area code 214. Here we go. I'm calling. Please leave your message for Scott Johnson. Scott, is this it, buddy? Is it over? After all these years, all we've been through? Me showing your picture on my stream, that was enough to do it? You guys didn't mention me once on this most recent episode. No stupid, no always stupid narco, the Marco, the narco, mooch, the goon, the shyster. None of that. What happened? Did Denise see? Did your family see? There's no way. And why did Peter take down all of I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Peter a voicemail after this, don't get me wrong, but why would Peter take down all his videos? I needed more of that motivation training. Wow. Anyways, just let me know if this is the end. Maybe say something on the next episode. Love ya. Mwah. No flipping way, bro. No flipping way. Here, Peter Mingles, let me make sure I got the right number. Yeah, 386. Here we go. I'm calling him. There we go. Yeah, it's been an inspiring ride. Creating thousands and thousands of people doing MLM right and or create an MLM lead, lead generation business. <laughs> He hung up. I'm going to call again. <laughs> I'm calling Ming now. Hello? Peter, are you answering and then just hanging up? He hung up again. I'm going to call again. Ming really got ran off YouTube wild. How are we supposed to do building our building fortune? How are we supposed to build our fortunes now? Big man. Peter. Don't be bad. Talk to me. Why does it just keep? Hello? Why does it keep hanging up? We've been on now. let he hung up again. This shit is crazy, bro. The nurse said he can't talk on the phone after lights out. 
Wow. Wow. Bro, Peter's in Florida, Scott's in Texas. Peter and I first had our first convo, which you can hear in the original live stream where me and Peter talk on the phone where he thinks I'm somebody else. Me and him talking, it was like midnight his time on Easter, and he picked up the phone. We talked for an hour. You've got to get that voicemail. I know. Wow. If they take the sites down, that's how I'll know. You know what? You know what's really, what would really tell me? Let me go to the Scott Johnson show. Oh, there's so many episodes, though. How could I just find the Scott Johnson episodes? You know what? Here, I have an idea. Buildingfortunesradio.com. I'll go to the Scott Johnson show specifically. That way I'm just going through those episodes. How do I do that? Scott Johnson show, radio show homepage. Okay, look. So here's all their episodes, right? Scott, Stop the MI2 scam and Peter Mingle's very anti-MLM YouTuber conference speech. Let's see. Is this still up? To me, that's just the worst slap in his own face um, because it was brought on by himself. All I did was offer information, and he slapped himself in the face by saying unread. So I just wanted to make that point because I was making that point before Glenn called in, and I wanted to finish it up because I I really think it's important, um, you know, because Narco is kind of a hero of that MLM conference. He's the one that really got – um, at least the first applause, I, I think maybe there was a little bit of a... Okay, so the other episodes about me are still up. Crazy. Okay, let me see. Don and Peter going on about something and everything in between. She was involved with Zeke and went to jail for 10 years, and Paz posted this in the Discord. I'll put the link in the chat to that if you want to join there. Wow. And that's who... Peter Mingles had a radio show with. Use a voice changer and call from another number. Moment of silence for real. Whew. I think you crossed the line. Nah, that, Peter's face was never a secret, but Scott, that bodied him. And it's the Scott Johnson radio show, so if they didn't want to talk about it, it's a reprieve for them. I bet they're loving this. Nah. You can hear the jealousy in Scott's voice. So true. Wow, bro, I cannot fucking believe this let me see can i pull up this picture of scott when he's young by the way this photo was low quality and needed to be enhanced so this picture was enhanced with ai and has been like smoothed out and zoomed in and whatever but i mean hello hello this guy was a hunkalicious man tell me i mean this does this strike you as the same guy in a and b I I do believe it is. If you look at the ears, I think they're very similar. I think it is him. This is 30 years apart, though, so it's hard to tell. But, um, you know, and the hair both going the same way. So I don't know, but, you know, and the eyebrow, like if you look at the eyebrows, the way it sort of protrudes, like he's uh, almost like a a primitive missing link type creature. it really bulges out his eyebrow area. And uh, nose is basically the same, I think. And it's tough. 30 years, different lighting, different angle, different pose. It's tough to say, but damn, bro. Calvin Klein by Scott Johnson. Hunk sauce. If BFR goes down, I might actually start a GoFundMe for them, says Jimmy. I need this in my life. <laughs> I would love to hear their private phone calls right now, yeah. You can do throwback, start throwback Thursdays, rewatch old episodes. <laughs> Don't be a stalker. No, I won't. Wow. Eyes are the same. This is crazy. They may be making a move or what they think is a move. I can't believe this. I titled this The Showdown because I was sure that they were going to come and clap back harder at me than they ever, ever have because of me revealing Scott's face. And they didn't do shit. This is insane. I can't believe this, bro. Wow. That's all it took? He got bodied. Scotty was a hottie, grew up, and got bodied. Come on now. (laughs) Bars. Jeez Louise, man. Wow. Who's going to listen to their show now if not us? Exactly. Craziness, bro. (laughs) 
We won. I think we can call it. We won. We did it. Where's my gun? Where's my freaking gun? It was fun while it lasted, bro. Some of my best stream memories come from Losing Fortunes Radio. Now I guess I really gotta drop this new video and stoke the fire again and make it make myself so popular again that they have to uh, that they have to talk about me. This is insane. This is an absolute madness. Wow. That was too fucking easy. I wouldn't have revealed it that soon if I knew that's what was gonna happen. <laughs> what are we gonna do on Saturdays? I don't know. Wow. Wow. So much for my YouTube channel is dying and all that shit y'all was talking, huh? Oh yeah, Beyond says this might be time to roll out the Robo Scott. I've been training a language model on Scott using AI, so we could just use AI Scott. I'm down. They set you up. I think they might be attending a con attending a conference. Why do you say that? Now what, bro? Now what the fuck do we do? The Bulls have been wrangled for real, dude. Yeehaw, it's bull wrangling time. That's haram. Wow. Doctor, we're losing him. I've been watching Marco so long, says Lord Vader, that I instinctively call the show Losing Fortunes. <laughs> wow. Wow. A moment of silence for real, bro. Everybody, I don't know what the right emoji is. Maybe it's a gravestone. Maybe it's a hat. Maybe I don't know what it is, but we need to have a moment of silence. To Losing Fortunes Radio. It was never a good show, but we made it a good show. It entertained us. It enraged us. Sometimes it triggered us. But boy, did we have fun with it. And we made the most out of two shitty people. Scott Johnson, a.k.a. Tex, and Peter Mingles. They brought a lot of laughter into our lives. And even though they were the butt of the joke, we love them. Scott and Peter, this one's for you. On behalf of me, always stupid... Narco the... Yo. Uh. I never fucked Wayne, I never fucked Drake. All my life, man, fuck's sake. If I did, I'm a Naj with him and let him eat my ass like a cupcake. My man full, he just ate. I don't duck nobody but tape. Yeah, that was a setup for a punchline on duct tape. Worry about if my butt fake. Worry about y'all hoes us straight. These girls are my sons, Scott and eight. Plus eight, when I walk in, sit up straight. I don't give a fuck if I was late. Dinner with my man on a G5 is my idea of an update. Hut, hut one, hut, hut two. Big titties, big butt two. Fuck with them real hitters who don't tell no one what they up to. Had to show bitches where the top is. Finger where the rock is. These hoes couldn't test me, even if their name was Pop Quiz. Mad bitches we don't fuck with. Bad bitches do we fuck with. I don't fuck with them chickens unless they last name is Cutlet. Let it soak in like seasoning and tell these bitches blow me. Lance Stevenson. It was at the end of May 2023 that we finally found out the true identity of Scott Tex Johnson. And though I will miss him uttering the words, always Marco, aka 
always stupid Marco the narco, Mooch the goon, the shyster. And him making up stories about my life and talking intricately about details of my past and masturbation and my obsession with Drake. We thank him for what he did contribute. There's no one like him and there never will be again. In your loving memory, we say thank you to you, Peter Mingles, career scammer and scammer apologist and weaver of words that make no sense because you contradict yourself all the time. And you, Scott, burning bright all the way into the afterlife where you and Satan will talk about MLM done right and the FTC attacking different establishments. We thank you. In the name of the cult, amen. As for me, there's nothing more for me. Crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna cry, bro. <laughs> Y'all gonna make me cry, bro. I'm gonna miss out on my on my boys Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles, dog. You cannot do me like this. Nah. Nah, bro. Say it right. Unread but not forgotten. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. How much to sing that high note for losing fortune? You know, before Sugar Mama dropped that Nicki Minaj verse uh, bag, I was going to say, who's going to drop a bag for, to commemorate us defeating Losing Fortunes Radio once and for all? I was going to say something like this. That must deserve like some sort of something. My God, bro. Rest in tools. Mama, I just killed a man. And then Andrew says, put a tool against his head. <laughs> <laughs> no. And pass. Why, God? Somebody else said, take me instead. Oh, my goodness. I'll miss our bingo and winkies. Hang on. Did they die? I mean, metaphorically. I mean, were they ever really alive? They've been dead for a long time. Exactly. 
some sort of horrible tool scam accident. Marco rides a horse into the sunset. Time to unsubscribe. Yeah, exactly. Was it all a tool scam? <laughs> oh, fuck. Sad. Very sad. Wow, bro. Roll the credits. No shit. Wow. Rip Scott and Peter. Gone but never forgotten. But always stupid fucking idiots. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you, Chunky Jan. This is insane. We need you to sing Haunted by Taylor Swift RN. I don't know that one, Alex, but thank you, Alex. Don't leave me like this. You know they're watching this with the flames coming out of their ears right now, yeah. Dying Fortunes Radio. I can't believe this, guys. I'm sorry. Honestly, I'm sorry. Like, I'm disappointed. I thought this was going to be like a big back and forth episode, like get your popcorn. But wow, I really think this might be the end. I have never seen them. They've never not talked about me. And they've never, I mean, I've shown Peter's YouTube channel on my stream before. I've shown pictures of him before. He's never deleted all his videos. Lord Vader says I'm crying and I don't know why. We'll always have the tool scam. Here's looking at you, Narco. Thank you, Jared. Hey, cheers to that. What do you want? What do you want? Yeah, in the rain. The worst part is that Scott photo is the ideal obituary photo. So true. Scott will live on in my video game. Peter looks like, what'd you say? Peter looks like a... Uh, an inmate. <laughs> we are all now one with the force. Imagine the Scott, the Scott and Peter <laughs> force ghost. <laughs> Somebody said, Andy said, the Ming dynasty is over. <laughs> the Ming dynasty. <laughs> what dynasty? There was never any, he never had any legacy to begin with, bro. Oh, I got to wear my, I'm in mourning now. I got to wear my hat to the side because I'm mourning. Let me flip it backwards. I look like, I look like future, like Jamie Foxx when I put it like this. This is crazy. The Ming dynasty. Scott, but never, Scott, but not forgot, son. Wow. Sorry for your loss, Marco. Thank you, Lily Lucky. Wow. <sighs> Scott, but not forgot, son. It was, all, it was the tool scams we made along the way. Try to call Ming one last time before we put the final nail in the coffin. I'm gonna need an extra therapy session for this. Nah, bro, I cannot believe it. I can't believe you've done this. I can't believe you've done this. My fortune isn't built yet. Like candles in the wind. You're not gone, you can't be gone. I'm gonna miss them for real. Crazy. The Ming Dynasty. <laughs> so stupid. We need a best of stream now. Yeah. Giselle, I can't believe it, but it looks like that. It looks like they're done with always narco. Fuck. We should do their show for them. Yeah, you guys should fill in. It's like the lost ending. We all watched and were let down. Next stream, wear a black veil for your morning. Yeah, next stream will be the funeral, and I'll get a bunch of clips from old episodes, and we'll react to those. No closure, just ghosting. Damn, bro. Where's Ming? Let me call Ming again. Three. Come on, Ming. You got to answer this, buddy. How do I change my number? The, the app I use is Text Plus. How do, I, how do I get a new number like every day if I want without having to pay too much money? I'll spend a couple bucks on it, but I'm not buying one of those expensive apps. Let's give it a few weeks to see if they're back. I mean, if I drop a big enough video, they'll comment on it. They can't resist. They literally won't be able to resist. He was, he, his wife found out that he was calling girls cunts and bitches and shit on the internet. So he was like, no, no, I promise. I'll just I'll run a clean show. I'll be nice. Wake me up. When September ends. Bad dog, if you watch this on replay, you got to go uh, email Scott and Peter again and let me know if they're still down to have you on or what. This is crazy, bro. It's just ringing. See, before it was going to, he was answering and hanging up. Now it's just voicemail. It's just ringing, ringing, ringing. Hello, this is Peter, and thank you for calling. Chances are, if you're receiving 
this message. I'm here, just on the other line. So since you called, you probably want to leave me a message. Leave me a quick and a detailed message. Repeat your phone number a few times, and I'll call you back. So again, please, repeat your phone number a few times. Leave a quick and a detailed message. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Ming. It's Marco, a.k.a. Always Marco, a.k.a. Always Stupid, Marco the Narco, Mooch the Goon, the Shyster. Is this the end, Peter? After all we've been through? Three years almost? You, you're just going to delete all of your YouTube videos? And you and Scott are just going to not talk about me anymore? Did the missus find out about what you guys were saying? And... You guys got in trouble because you're two grown old men talking bullshit on the internet all day? Is that what happened, Peter? Are the websites going to stay up? Are you guys ever going to talk about me again? What do I have to do for this not to be over? I need us. You need us. We need us. Anyways, Ming, let me know. Yours truly, always stupid Marco the narco, mooch the goon, the shyster. Love ya. Mwah. <sighs> Chip crazy, bro. Live from Goon headquarters in scenic Edmonton, Alberta, it's time for Goon News. With your host, always Marco. Marco! You give us five minutes, we'll give you the goo. Do you like me? <laughs> I gotta get the bag. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, you stupid fucking asshole. Well, this breaking story, Goo News exclusive, Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles, a.k.a. Tex and Ming, have officially, at least it seems, given up their battle against notorious but somehow broke drug czar always marco aka always stupid marco the narco mooch the goon mooch a bear the shyster it was a civil war that raged on for several years and uh neither side showed any mercy or took any prisoners but it appears that Scott and Peter have waved the white t-shirt of defeat. We'll update you on this story as it develops, but for now, but for now it appears that it's over. Turn Saturday into karaoke live streams. You sound like a crazy ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I am, I am. Repeat your number 18 times, yeah. Bargaining is the next stage of loss. He's not there, Marco. He's gone. No! For real, I, I bet Denise found out and told them to knock it off. So true. And Paz says, let's give it a few weeks. Let's give it about two weeks. Trump, Trump always says two weeks. We're looking at... We're looking at doing a lot of things probably in the next two weeks. He'll, he'll always say two weeks. And then he'll be like, you know, you tell somebody something, two weeks go by, they forget everything. Wow, man. <sighs> Peter and Scott's obituary, both are outlived by the Amway tool scam. This shit is crazy, bro. Taisha, what did you miss? Only the end of an era. The end of a legacy, the Ming Dynasty. How did I never think of that one before, bro? We've begun acceptance, yes. It was a fair fight. Marco, I need a sticker with all of those names on. <laughs> Just the longest name. Wow. I think they tapped out, yep. Marco's going through the stages of grieving in real time, literally. The white t-shirt of defeat. Man. Shit crazy for real, bro. You could literally get like take screenshots of each moment of me in the phases of grief and put that together in like a grid. I should tell my clients I'll get to the task in the next two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. 
wow, man, what do I do with my life now? What do I do? I got to go to my cousin's wedding tomorrow. I guess life moves on, but how boring for them and how boring for us. We've had this symbiotic commensalism relationship now for a while. Of course, I'll keep streaming on Saturdays. If you say Scott Johnson three times in a mirror, a week later, a box full of DVDs shows up at your door. Yeah. White cassette tapes. Should I wear black or the America flag? Both. If only we could have the FTC tap their phones and send us the audio files, right? I mean, maybe, maybe Scott will go on Glenn's show again. Who knows? Can we get a bunch of random Marcos? <laughs> well, they'll be back just nicer. I sure hope so. Because Scott is honestly the most relentless, ruthless, non-compromising internet troll I've ever seen in my life. There's even one blog where he was banned from years ago, and the moderator of the blog like posted a statement about it and said, I've always supported free speech on the internet, and Scott Johnson is the one person that has made me question my belief that everybody should be able to, like, should be entitled to say whatever they want on the internet because he's just such a toxic and negative individual in any community that he is involved in. So let's hope that they come back, bro. Unbreak my heart for real. Wait for the reincarnation. Yeah, they're due for a rebrand. The FTC doxed Scott on accident. Yeah. Ming Dynasty t-shirt. Oh, my God. Ah, man. I do have a feeling that Peter made their made that decision and not Scott. He'll find a way to keep spamming. That's actually true because Glenn uploaded this video only 19 hours ago, and I'm pretty sure Scott commented on it. Let me make sure. Uh, let's find this here. Oh, I've got to switch that back over. Turn this to this and this to this. Here. About 60. Wow, he didn't comment on it on this one yet. No way. Maybe he's really let it go. Frank report. Yes, that's the one. Hey, they somehow somehow Palpatine returned. Somehow Scott and somehow the tool scam returned. Losing fortunes radio. The next chapter. Rebrand it. Get a new show. Figure something new out, you guys. Scott and Peter. Fix up. I mean, Peter's phone number is on his site. If anyone wants to call and ask him about plans for the future regarding Always Stupid Marco, let me know. I'm, I'm sort of sad that I won, actually. As fucked up as it sounds, I'm sort of sad that I won. Crazy. The show is always boring, yeah. Crazy. Well, we're going to make sure that Saturday streams are still fun, no doubt. And let this be proof that no matter what, I always come out on top in any beef. I always crush my enemies. I'm going to fucking buy that domain name, Building Fortunes Radio. It's crazy. Surviving Fortunes Radio. We might actually, I might actually have to go back into the archives and react. Because back in the day when they were talking about me, I didn't used to like make it a thing. It wasn't like a, a habit of mine or a ritual of mine to react to their, to their show. So I'm sure there's countless Building Fortunes radio episodes where they talk about me that we haven't reacted to, honestly. So, wow. Building Empires radio, Building Dynasties, yeah. What up, D3? Yeah, crazy shit, man. Crazy. Thank you again, uh, Sugar Mama, for that big, big bag. That's amazing. I mean, that's got to warrant the bag, right? That's got to warrant some bags. The fact that it's finally over, I mean, that would really be the nail in the coffin, as they like to say, is uh, people donating. Is them taking that L and trying to save face by not talking about me and Peter deleting all of his YouTube videos, and then for them to watch this and see me respond to that and see me get bags, it would be the perfect cherry on top. Wow. Absolutely insane, bro. I can't believe it. I can, but I can't. Next week, Mecha Scott. It was almost too easy. Yeah. It's like Power Rangers, how they defeat the villain, and then the villain just grows into a giant version, and we have to build the Megazord to defeat it. Is it because I found the picture? I'm guessing so. Wow. 
Might actually be the best PR movie they ever made. Way too easy. Crazy, y'all. Well, we might have to go into Discord voice chat right now. We only need two likes to hit 200 likes, by the way, too. Almost the entire chat is members. I love it. I mean, yeah, dude. We, we might have to go into the Discord voice chat right now and talk about our, you know, let you guys give some eulogies to Scott and Peter and tell them about, tell me about their your favorite memories of them and what you're going to miss, you know? So, prepping for my great debate? No, I don't think so, bro. Me don't think so. You, you either die a BFR or live long enough to become the tool scam. So true. Scott's a bully who got punched once and went right out. So true. Has to be the pick because nothing else has shut him up. I, I agree. It's got to be the pictures, man. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, Jared. Graves in season two. Thumbs up the ting. Crazy that as we're finishing, it's always that way, isn't it? Every time I'm finishing a stream is when the most viewers pop in for whatever reason. LL Beyond going to get AI Scott working reliably by next week. I love that. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys posted. Let's go, let's go have a little support group in Discord. Discord voice chat. Jump over there. I'm ending the stream. Can't believe this. Cannot believe you've done this. And let's, let's talk about our favorite memories, and I'll let you guys give some eulogies uh, to Scott and Peter in the, in the Discord. So I'll see you over there. Oh, and Paz says check Discord. Hold on. Let me do that before I click end. Let's see. They were rebranding and investing 50K in Google Ads this whole time. Dropping next week. Yeah, I doubt it. I'm at work and have been able to listen to parts of the stream. Nice, Lens. Okay, I'm checking Discord right now. A short history of the Ming Dynasty. Hilarious. And Paz. Showdown? <laughs> Dave Vaughn says, showdown? They didn't show up. Ooh. Crazy. Rachel, welcome to the Discord. Let me go ahead and make you a recruit member in there. Rachel, oh my gosh. I can't believe this, guys. Dave Vaughn, that's a bar. That is a bar. What's going to happen to the Losing Fortunes Radio tab in the Discord now? Gosh, man. Fuck. All right. Peace out, y'all. We'll see you in Discord. All right. Love y'all. Bye, I guess. One last time, you know. Do you like me? <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Marco. 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 Come on, Marco. Fuck him. That's haram. Yeehaw. Marco, go screw up. Yeehaw. It's bull wrangling time. Crazy. All right. Peace.